Welcome to Gun Culture Radio, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Derek and John, everybody. Let me hear it. <laughs> People you don't clap that? for podcasts. It doesn't oh, yeah. work. Dude, you gotta get that. You gotta have the applause sign. And that. where's the yeah. uh, fake studio audience? Oh yeah, at? yeah, that's right. Or we could just we could just like say that there's one. That's you know? a studio that they'll never see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, how, but next thing you know, you'll get requests. You know, oh, can I come down and uh, you know be at the Big John Studio? Uh, oh, sure, dude. I'll send forty eight ninety five. <laughs> There's a great audience here. They don't love the show. <laughs> <laughs> they came out in numbers. Yeah. Uh, dude. That, that'd be tough to bomb at a podcast. Uh, I, I've done some live podcasts with mm-hmm. Dad before. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's weird. Like, I try not to look at the crowd because where it's a podcast, it's, you know, you, you can't really tell if people are that interested or not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I'm afraid I'm going to, like, make eye contact with someone that's just kind of like... <laughs> I thought. Wait, I thought that was a comedian yeah. thing, you know, when you you uh, you picture him in under underwear or something. Or uh, oh yeah, because you, know, you, you always got the guy at the comedy show that does not have a sense of humor. Yeah. I mean, I never understood that, dude. You have absolutely no sense of humor, but you came to a comedy club. But yeah, talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking about? No, no, no. Are you talking about me? No, no. Are you talking about me? <laughs> no, no. People that can be you step outside crowd. if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> step outside and I'll tell you a joke. <laughs> <laughs> have a joke off. <laughs> hey, that's close. Did you say uh, joke off? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> See, I want the other one. <laughs> so I, was, I was joking off earlier today. <laughs> Is that too much for the beginning of the show? <laughs> uh, so, joking uh, off in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, John. You can cut that. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I heard uh, some comedian. Some uh, comedian. He talked about how uh, these people that no matter what you say, no matter how good you think your material is, you just can't get through to them. Right. And they're always right there in the front row, <laughs> so you can't yeah. miss seeing them. Right. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. Is like you might have a joke that's doing well, but yeah. you end up making eye contact with the guy that's just giving you a, <laughs> a blank stare. That's, that's right. You know, so that one it, guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, like. I tr- usually what I, I like I've kind of evolved, but what I try to do now is like while I'm setting up the joke, uh, I'll make eye contact with people because it helps me feel like more connected with the yeah, audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But usually when I do the punchline, I mm-hmm. don't like to look at, <laughs> at someone specifically mm-hmm. because it's too much. It's too much pressure on that one person. I love that. I love doing that. <laughs> I love yeah, that. he likes to do that. I love doing that. But it's not for them. It's for me because like if they. You know, like whatever you're, if you're doing stand up in front of like 50 people, yeah, no matter almost no matter how good the joke is, there's at least a couple of people that aren't gonna. It's enjoy always that it. one guy. Just go, huh? What? Yeah. So what if you end up uh-huh. looking at that one guy? <laughs> then right. like that's how you're gonna imagine the joke. You know, that's thing. what I do. And then I'm like, what? You didn't like that joke? <laughs> <laughs> I worked a long time to make that joke. Are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> Room of 50. This thing we got going, I don't like it right now. <laughs> Room of 50. 48 guys. Are, are, are rolling in the aisles, and that one guy, the guy you make eye contact with, is like, I, I, I don't get it. What's he, what's he talking about? Yeah, exactly. there's always that one guy. There's always him. That's yeah. great tension. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter, B- buddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And then you get into a fight with somebody. Right, what yeah. the what's the, what's his name? Uh, comedian. He's real famous for doing that. Yeah, toward the end of his show, he always starts picking people out of the front row. That's uh, um, uh, PJ uh, Harvey. Uh, oh, uh, Steve Harvey. No, 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 not uh, him. Uh, uh, Dio, Dio. Hugo. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he's uh, he's known for that. He uh, the whole show two hours, no problem. Down the last ten minutes, he starts. Don't be in the front row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't be in the front row. <laughs> yeah, he starts targeting people and. Uh, uh, that, eh, if it works, it's good. Yeah. If it don't, it's like okay, you just made six enemies. So see, I don't, I don't like to do that because I. It's not because I care about people's feelings. It's because, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's because I know they're probably going to have something better to say uh, than I would. Okay. So like, I don't like to open up that can of worms. Yeah, okay. It's the end of the show, but that's why uh, uh, he does it at the end of the show. So yeah. by the time I'm done, it's time to leave. Hey, have a nice night. You know, hey, yeah. any comments, get out of here. It is impressive people that can do that. You know, they have, oh, they yeah. can, they know that that their comebacks are going to be so good. Yeah, that they can say anything to somebody, pick them apart, and they're going to be ready. You know, which again, if you're in the crowd and, and uh, you know the comedians start coming after you, dude. Take it, hey, it's a it's a comedy show. Relax. Yeah, you know, yeah. Hey, don't get upset. Hey, I'm not like that, dude. Such a, it's, yeah. a, it's a show. Come on. Yeah, I've I've always 
my thing is like I've never had any really bad hecklers, but mm-hmm. just anytime somebody says something, I try to take the like the uh, Aikido mindset. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Instead of trying to like have something better and like mm-hmm. shut them down, you mm-hmm. know, or whatever. Like everyone's seen those YouTube videos of comedians shutting down hecklers. Yeah, yeah. They don't post the ones where it just goes really bad. Uh yeah. And it doesn't work out, which is how it happens a lot of the time. It's kind of like the show Cops. Yeah. So like I usually will try to deflect it. If it wasn't something directly like hateful against you, like, hey, yeah. buddy, you suck. Mm-hmm. Usually it's not stuff like that. It's, no, no, no. I mean. So you kind of like acknowledge it or like say something that kind of makes them look like an asshole or whatever. But you sort of just kind of move on past it and just. And I think you got to remember, too, that, you know, it's, it's a club environment. They're drunk. They're whatever else. Eh, you know, of course, they're going to say that. Of yeah. Course. You know, hey. Yeah, exactly. Did you ever get hecklers when you're in the military? Uh, yeah. You kidding? Except, we have, like, oh, you're trying to shoot me? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> then I shoot them shoot again. So I <laughs> got you this time. All right. Yeah, I solved that problem. Uh, yeah, fortunately, uh, in the military, no. The heckling does not go over well. <laughs> with, with uh, one thing I try to always emphasize is that uh, never make fun of your people. Now, there you get these, uh, these people who, um, who aren't used to positions of authority. Right. Uh, who go overboard with it. And all you're doing, if you're not a, um, a participatory leader, okay, I hope I, con- a- hope I conjugated that word right. Yeah. Uh, if you're not a participatory, that means you work with your people. We're all in this together. If you're not that kind of leader, then you're going to draw all kinds of flack from your guys. Yeah. They, they respect is something that's in the army. They respect the rank, but they don't have to respect the man, and that's true. Yeah, if you're sense. not the right kind of leader that get, earns their respect, then they're going to make fun behind your back. They're going to make fun of you. They're going to do imitations of you. And there's some, you got guys that always, <laughs> there are always guys out there that got you down. Yeah. They got your mannerisms, your voice, it's your like inflection. It's like Ross from Friends on that's Brothers, <laughs> Band of Brothers. Exactly. I yeah. mean, there's always that guy. Yeah. So uh, you don't want to be the guy he's making fun of. Hopefully, if you're the kind of leader you should be, then your people respect you because you need them. Right, you you need them to go out to keep you from getting uh, your head blown off and getting them killed. Right, uh, so you want respect, and you get that by showing them that uh, their welfare is a top concern. It, it seems like too, uh, like being too buddy buddy with the guys almost can be can be that's detrimental. Like, like um, for example, movies are my only reference yeah. for this, but uh, the movie Platoon. Yeah, the guy that. Uh, I can't remember what his character's name was. He was wearing like his college sweatshirt and stuff, you know. Uh, and, the lieutenant, the platoon leader. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, like he tried to be like, "Hey guys, how's it going?" Ohio, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, yeah. how's the morale? Do you know? And trying too hard. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then Tom Berger's character, it was everyone knew he was the biggest asshole, but they respected him. Uh, he'd been know. shot seven times. Okay, number one, I see some bad aim by the enemy. I can't imagine getting hit seven times by an AK. Yeah. <laughs> and you lived. Okay, yeah. that guy is bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that guy's bad. Yeah. And that that's a guy, spoiler alert, that's a guy that needed to die in Vietnam. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, he was very useful in Vietnam. Yeah. But probably didn't need to go on much further than what that. What does that guy do back in America? Yeah. And, uh, okay. You uh, can't. You know, you know he would cashier have... at Walmart. Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, not that guy. Not him. Uh, readjustment, which I think that guy would have had a real, what was his character? Uh, from uh, um, I can't remember his name. Uh, Barnes. Barnes, that's Barnes. right. Yeah. I, well, I, I pulled that one out. <laughs> the, uh, B- <laughs> Barnes, that guy would have had a real problem adjusting to yeah. being back home. It, it's an adjustment for anybody, but especially those guys, uh, I'm guessing long time soldier, multiple wars, multiple deployments, and now you're back out here. How you doing? Yeah. He's the kind of guy, he has to work for the Army as a civilian because he can't be out here. Right. So I, I imagine, too, it's like um, when, you know, we're doing, when you're doing something that intense, even though it's like maybe you're over there for a year and a half or yeah. – three years or whatever it is it probably doesn't feel like three years it probably oh, time feels flies like, it's like whoa I 10 figured, months already jeez oh what happened yeah so i figured it'd be the opposite like it feels like a bigger section of your life than it really is depends on what you're doing uh usually what's going to happen is that uh if you're uh if uh, usually hopefully you got a full schedule because personally for me the biggest enemy was downtime yeah you're sitting on your little bunker looking out at nothing well, there's probably somebody out there looking back, but you can't see them. <laughs> right. uh, and uh, you got nothing to do but start pondering, man, you know what? 15 years ago, I should have turned left when I turned right. Yeah. You start pondering every left and right turn you made. Did I do this? I should have done that. You start second guessing yourself. Uh, that's bad. Right. Because, oh, man, I've been, what have I been doing? Really, with anything. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's a tough thing is, is to like look at something that you've done and to, to scrutinize yourself accurately. 
you know, because yes. it's good to be a, a tough critic on yourself, mm-hmm. but sometimes you can end up like, um, I don't know, demotivating yourself. Being to overly harsh on yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You it make is. the best decisions you can at the time. Right. Because it's a weird thing. It's like nobody knows you like you know you. Yeah. But yet you have a unrealistic idea of how other people see you. So yeah. if you look mm-hmm. at something you're doing, you're like, oh, that's why am I, why am I, I'm terrible at that. Mm-hmm. No one thinks, that, well, it's like, that's what you think. Maybe it's not true. You know, or maybe you think you're good at something and don't be too harsh on yourself. I mean, we make the best decisions we can at the time. Right. Of course, hindsight's twenty twenty. It's easy to Monday morning Monday morning quarterback. Very easy to do that. Yeah. We make the again. We make the best decisions we can at that time. So, uh, of course, if I had known that some things that were worked out the way that they did, I would have done them. Like getting married at nineteen. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I would. I would have done that. Yeah. <laughs> if I've been, if I knew she was the daughter of Satan. <laughs> but uh, but uh, <laughs> don't worry, she ain't listening to this show. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Man, that's you know of all of all the people that you're gonna marry. You know, I mean, well, how many daughters did he have? You know? <laughs> I definitely <laughs> met one of them. Don't <laughs> <laughs> no, worry. Did like the horns come in yet? Nah, it was that. Don't worry. She's in a cave somewhere, hanging upside okay. down, waiting for the sun to go down. But anyway, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it's been it's been 25 years, so I'm pretty sure uh, yeah. she ain't listening to this show. But <laughs> 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 so uh, yes hindsight is 2020 mm-hmm. yeah definitely so yeah i can see that it's downtime you think <laughs> nothing too much, to do but ponder just, yeah. and oh my god you know what was i doing i should have went to school should have finished that should have yeah. no uh stay focused it's better to uh boredom is can be dangerous because yeah. that's when you start taking risk i'm here to tell you that you wouldn't normally take because well, speaking, you're bored yeah speaking of the devil what's that uh, idle <laughs> hands <you know? laughs> <Idle> hand. <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. Uh, we uh, went out there uh, gallivanting around the countryside in Iraq one night, uh, you know, hunting the night vision because, <laughs> oh, ain't nothing else to do. Come on, let's yeah. go out here. Hey, they're like terrorists everywhere. Yeah, come on. What they going to do? Shoot us? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Boredom can be dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Find know. yourself joking off. <laughs> <laughs> like late at night. Yeah. <laughs> Idle hands. I- <laughs> <laughs> decided to joke myself off. Don't <laughs> <laughs> say <So> you won't. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. That's where you uh, learn so much stuff about history, though, isn't it? From just being in the uh, army and uh, yeah, because every, a lot. So. Every, because in some of these deployments you go, you got a lot of downtime, so you become an avid reader. Uh, well, people who aren't getting into trouble anyway, yeah. uh, become avid, avid reader. drinker or avid reader. Right? Uh, well, no, 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 no alcohol in the combat zone now. Now, yeah. now, now, now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever? Obviously, you can't name names, but did you ever know of or hear of people actually going into a combat situation like drunk or like? Uh, no, I'll say this. Or something? Um, people do uh, what they do, whatever that is. But I will say this: a lot of people, people are self um, self policing as far as that go. You do what you have to do to um, to deal with the deployment and get through it. But whenever you get in that vehicle, go outside that gate, it's time to be straight. Yeah, you, you are. I mean, uh, people are relying on exactly, you. and you're relying on yourself, and those people are relying on you. You can't uh, you can't be the one that uh, caused someone to get hurt or injured or killed because you weren't you didn't have your A game. Yeah. So I have never in three wars witnessed anybody go out there actually on the job out there that wasn't 100 percent straight. Yeah. Now. Back in the camp, different, you yeah. know, different. But when it came time to, uh, so there wasn't like a drunken warrior. It's like every, it's like he's better. He's better <laughs> no, he's yeah. Yeah. he ain't no good unless you give him a shot of scotch. No, no, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's that's movie BS. Yeah, uh, one problem I did have was I'll tell you this story: the sleepwalker, <laughs> uh, this guy, this individual who should remain nameless. Uh, uh, we worked different shifts, and uh, this guy, uh, I opened that that door to our uh, hooch. Our, our room yeah. uh, about, uh, what, 3, 4 in the morning, and this dude flew up out of that bed. Remember, everybody was walking around with a M4. Right. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, he flew up out of that bed. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, hey, dude, it's it's, it's me. What are you doing? He starts coming toward me. What are you doing? I'm like, dude, get back. What are you doing? And finally, the guy started coming at me. I hit the guy. And he goes, oh, oh well, uh, oh, 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 it's you. Oh. And he goes back to bed like nothing happened. <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. The next morning, I woke up. I woke up. I says, "Dude, are you all right?" He says, "What?" 
last night, dude. He says, what happened last night? I'm like, dude, you freaking attacked me. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, oh, man, I sleepwalk sometimes. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know, right? So. They say you're not supposed to wake up a sleepwalker <laughs> because they'll get violent with you. But I guess if you wake them up by punching them in the, in the head, <laughs> then you've like... So from then on, now now whenever I came home at night, it was tactical entry. Now I, I'd open, stand to the side, open the door, sling it open, see if anything happened. You know, yeah. peek inside. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put a little obstacle course of furniture between his bed and mine. Yeah, and I kept you know, I kept being afraid I'd wake up and see him. You know, hanging in barbed wire, sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. That, yeah, that combat zone would be a bad place to sleep on. Oh, yeah, very bad. That don't work out too good for you. Yeah. <laughs> don't wander out at night. <laughs> like, yeah, be like World War II, wake up in a Nazi foxhole, you know? That's yeah, you're going to get some milk from the <laughs> enemy's refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> they're like don't don't wake him up he's sleepwalking <laughs> go back. it's not good to wake him up just let him go back <laughs> oh man like that what's that scene in band of brothers I mean, he wasn't sleepwalking but where he um uh it was the guy who walked was walking around the line or something and you know and he mm-hmm. the guy was like flash and he didn't do the thunder thing he stabbed then, him or something uh yeah oh man um it was one of those was shows. It Malarkey uh, that did that, or I can't remember which guy. Yeah, I know was, some but. commander got he uh, he was uh, he got he got sent home early because he got shot. He was out there out walking. Him and uh, uh, Major Winters were walking uh, down the railroad tracks one night. Yeah, I remember that part. And yeah. uh, some guy, you know, eight seventeen year old kid, you know, on guard, which naturally was uh, a little bit amped up, of course. Yeah. And uh, he yelled out uh, the password, and they didn't give the, the counter sign quick enough, and the kid opened up and, and shot the guy twice. Yeah. So yeah, didn't kill him. Which uh, you get hit twice with an M1 30 out six, and, oh, then you, and you didn't die. Whoa, that's impressive. That's impressive. That guy's bad. Yeah, I know. That was that's a shame that, that happened. He, uh, it was I, a complete accident, of course. I could see too how <clears throat> if you're really jacked up. Oh yeah, like it's gonna se- seem like a lot of time. You yeah. know, if you're like I forget which one you say first, but if you're like you know thunder or sign whatever, counter sign, yeah, and then uh, like to you if you hear thunder, you go. Oh, it said flash, you know. But mm-hmm. if you're like thunder, like just have a second might seem like an eternity. A bit too slow there, fella. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be. I'd tell you what. I'd be and quick remember, on that. Remember, it's got to be something completely unrelated. It can't be peanut butter. It can't be uh, yeah, you know yeah. white bread. It's got to be like uh, uh, I like it, flash thunder or uh, yeah. you know, something completely at odds, opposite yeah. from the from the first word. Because sometimes the bad guys can guess. Yeah, you know what you know what the counter. Oh yeah, and they probably did eventually figure it out. Well, but it changes every night. You have that. A- oh, okay, but you have that accent. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it just happens to guess what it is. <laughs> if it's like the Italians, it's like thunder, a flash. <laughs> <laughs> Use the accent. Hey, fella, <laughs> where <are> you from? <laughs> so, so. So yeah, they watch the same movies we're watching. Yeah. Eh, don't worry. When he says Flash, go Thunder. You'll be fine. <laughs> we're Americans. <laughs> I can't do a German accent. That's the only reason I do uh, Italian. Dude, oh my god. Oh, I won't try. No, oh, that swear. wasn't German. No. <laughs> 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 so, no. Oh, speaking of that, one of my favorite uh, scenes in this is a movie period is um um Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Whenever uh Brad Pitt's character is like Ariba Derchi. Ariba Derchi. says so country. Yeah, right. Uh, oh, and what's the name of the killer? Uh, well, which one? Yeah. Uh the German guy that they busted out prison Stiglitz. Oh yeah, yeah. I met a guy in the army with the same name. And he said the same. I said, uh, dude, that name. He says, Yeah, man, don't worry. I know. Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. But we get that all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. That's funny. That's a great movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, nice alternate history ending. Hey. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's not how Hitler actually died. <laughs> <laughs> Hitler never died. That's right. Yeah, yeah. the Jewish guy machine gunned him in the end. Okay. Yeah. Great ending. Hey. Hitler is probably like, you know, they preserved his brain and he's like uploaded oh, okay. to a computer program uh, okay. or something. <laughs> that's right. He's in the, he's in the little basement in the Pentagon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go right. <laughs> Go right. What? <laughs> And we're not listening to you, Al. Adolf. Yeah. We're not listening to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I go back and forth on that on that conspiracy. Like, if any thing is like, if anybody, uh, you know, could conceal someone like Hitler, mm-hmm. you know, it could, you know, it might be 
the people that are left over from the Nazi days, all the resources and money that they had. But then again, it's like he's so recognizable. Yeah. You, <laughs> I mean, he would literally have to never leave the house. <laughs> Walmart. <You know>? Hey, <laughs> the guy that's yeah. checking the self-checkout. Hey. <laughs> He'd probably lose the mustache. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd probably be the it. first thing. Or <laughs> keep, it, keep it. That would really throw him off. Oh, no, no. You got to hide in plain sight. That's right. That's what you just stay looking just the way you are. Just dress like Hitler all the time. <laughs> oh, nah, it couldn't be him. He could, <laughs> he could come out once a year on Halloween. That's right. They go, yeah, hey, dude. Not, I'm not like, not, not liking that costume, but okay. That's why you got hide in plain sight. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, Hitler. Of course. <laughs> yeah. There's these pictures online of you know like a you know like a 60 year old Hitler and stuff, but I don't. I mean, he was 56 uh, at the end of the war. Uh, if he did survive, which yeah, we don't know, not for sure. We weren't sure because they never found the body, and I think Stalin turned up a piece of brain fragment uh, a couple of years later. Later, um, he was fifty six then. Yeah. Multiple multiple conditions. Okay, so I, I thought he was younger I, than that for some reason. No, nah, his birthday. The war didn't end too long after his fifty sixth birthday. Okay, uh, and uh, I don't see him lasting too long after that. Especially he had, uh, I think, he had Parkinson's too. Oh, dude. So. Uh, uh, I, he would be around today. <laughs> I no, don't think so. No, I think it's sad to say he's gone. He's in a, a, wheel, a rocking chair in Argentina. I uh, remember me back in the forties. Uh, yeah, mm. I think it's it's interesting that they still find the. I haven't heard one in a while, but you still occasionally will hear a story about they find some Nazi that's been hiding out. You know, there's some organization, some Jewish organization that they oh, yes. like track them down. Oh man, I, I, I should know the name of that. Yeah, but they still find them. You know, well, like ninety-five years old. You know, uh, well, because again, crimes against humanity. Oh no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. No, I'm not saying this. <laughs> what is ninety-five? What yeah, is no, no, whatever. No, no, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying at all. Okay. What are you trying to say, John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you sitting here defending? Uh, def- you know? Defending the Nazis. <laughs> it's my favorite pastime. <laughs> but no, but it's but it's it's crazy to me that like. That they find find them that late. Yes. That there's some guy that got away with it for that long. And he's like 95, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh, my past has finally come to. Argentina you know. was a big hideout for guys, for those guys after the war. Yeah. Uh, big German uh, um, population there. Um, uh, so, yeah, a lot of them, you know, after the things went south in 45, they jumped on the next boat, the submarine, U boat, whatever, and took off South America. Flying saucers. Uh, hey, uh, hey, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> so, uh, you never, you, we don't know. I yeah. mean, uh, you'd be surprised we're still walking around here. I think yeah. they, that last one I believe they caught was Mangalay. Doctor, okay. uh, they had Doctor at Auschwitz. Yeah. And they definitely deserve it. That I was mean, like sixty-one. That was yeah. almost over. So you're saying ago. they deserve to be caught, John? Oh yeah. Let's make that clear. I mean, I get. You know, th- that's always a tough issue, right? Mm-hmm. Just following orders. I mean, they probably would have been killed. Uh, that doesn't fly. You got to know. You got to know. It's exactly. like rounding people up and just exterminating them. That does know. not fly. Uh, this, oh, I'll just follow BS because yeah. you have to follow lawful orders. Uh, exterminating or machine gunning uh, does not, it's not a lawful order. These people got, they're right. defenseless. They're not enemy. Uh, that argument didn't work at Nuremberg. It doesn't, didn't work at My Lie with yeah. uh, Major, with uh, Lieutenant Colley. Uh, we were just following orders when we shot those people down. Nope, sorry. Yeah. There's, they're lawful orders and shooting unarmed people is not lawful. Right. I'll tell you, I'll just say, I'll tell you where I think the, 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 uh, kind of the line would be on mm-hmm. the just following orders thing. Mm-hmm. Like the extent of where I could, uh, like I could see like a forgivable situation. Yeah. If you're being or, or ordered to fire on like a position, let's mm-hmm. say, and you suspect, you know, you never like, you're not like a hundred percent sure, but you're pretty sure there's like women and children or yeah. like people mm-hmm. that don't deserve, you know, to be uh, killed, but you're being ordered to fire on that position and you do so. That's one area where I could kind of see if you, you know, it turns out it was like a school or something yeah. like really terrible. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, in that kind of situation, you don't, you don't know, like maybe, um, you know, they're, you know, they've got artillery or something in that, in that area and the they're, enemy and they're uses, taking uh, your guys out and yeah, maybe there's a bunch of kids there. Maybe you don't have a choice. The enemy is using the, uh, the, uh, the civilians, the shields, right. shield. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, it's horrible. It's a horrible thing. Know, but, as long as you don't knowingly. If it's if it's a collateral damage issue, you know that's under, not right, but understandable. Right. Uh, and also, you get you don't knowingly fire on uh, uh, undefended, uh, indefensible people. Right uh, now, does the does bad guys use people as shields all the time? Yeah, all the time. Uh, I think we need to make sure we understand that too. Uh, I think the problem that I see we have in America is that we sanitize war. 
Right. Uh, the enemy doesn't fight fair. Exactly. Yeah. And we should not, we should also make, make sure everyone understands that uh, and do everything we can to avoid any kind of civilian collateral damage. Absolutely. Right. But also understand that the people we fight do that. They'll hide behind women and children. No problem. Yeah. Knowing that we won't fire on them. Right. And so. I, I, and the way I, I kind of look at it, I think you, know, you would have to rationalize it. Like if somebody, I mean, there was a situation that happened when we weren't there at the time, but where we used to work, mm-hmm. where someone was hiding behind, like, you know, it was their mother or their aunt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, firing yeah. at the police. Uh, uh, the thing is, I look at that situation is if, if there is a 100% lethal threat happening, yeah. like I'm being fired upon and I have to, you know, disable that threat and they're hiding behind mm-hmm. innocent people. You know, you have to protect yourself. Yeah. And I would just try to look at it like, well, I didn't, I didn't kill those innocent people. You know, mm-hmm. they did. You know. Also, uh, that incident you're talking about, the reason they did that because we weren't there because that, oh, yeah. that would have turned out a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah. If the other crew had been out there. But, yeah, I uh, think so for sure. Oh yeah. And th- in fact, I'm sure that's why they did it because the crew, the boys in black, weren't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. It was a. I, I know that. Um, a metro guy almost got his foot shot off. <laughs> Not shot I, off. I know that shot. Um, you understand the uh, these people uh, know who they're firing on. Yeah. Because um, one thing people don't understand is that uh, the police, uh, sworn officers, uh, metropolitan police are heavily regulated as far as what yeah. they can do and what they can't do, and they have to strictly follow their uh, police their, their their agency procedures. Right. Uh, like I know some of them, if you fire at a moving vehicle. Even though they're firing at you and that vehicle's moving away, firing at you, and you return fire, you could be fired for that. You could be a relief for that, right? Because it's not that they're necessarily worried about you injuring the the bad guys. What if you injure a bystander because you're firing in the vehicle that's in motion? Right. So that's what they're worried about. That's their concern. My thing with that too is that there's two separate issues. We get hung up on this idea of the legal definition of a threat uh-huh. and can you prove it in court, all these kind of things, yeah. which are important things. Oh, beware. yeah. Oh, yeah. But as far as you in the moment, in the situation, yeah. to me, the only thing that matters in that situation is do, do you believe, like mm-hmm. do you genuinely believe that this is a real threat, threat to your yes. life that you have to act on? Which it's, the court takes that into account too. What was right. the officer's uh, frame of mind at the time? Right. If you shoot someone because you can, that that you're a terrible person. You're done, yeah. I mm-hmm. think even if, you know, like, like for example, technically if someone breaks into your house mm-hmm. and they don't have a gun, you can shoot them. Now, there's a re- good reason for that because mm-hmm. you don't know. They might... They might have one. I mean, they broke into your house while you were there. They you have forcible, a, forcible, forcibly entered yeah, your house. You have a reason a to problem. believe that they're yeah. dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, and they could be. It could grab one of your guns. It's or something dark. Like that. Yeah, right. you don't know. You don't know. Yeah. But if there was somebody who was in that situation, they knew legally they could shoot the person, but they knew that the person wasn't a threat for some reason. Like they could see their hands. Like he was like sleepwalking. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Hands out in front of him. (laughs) Trying to get some milk. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Complaining about the cold pizza. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I, uh, in that, in that situation, like you could shoot them and then, you know, everyone would be like, Oh, good job. And you know, you wouldn't get in trouble, but, you're still a bad person because you yeah. know what you did. You know? <coughs> oh yes. Um, again, you, uh, you got to make sure you're running the rules of engagement through your mind. Whenever yeah. you your own personal rules of engagement. Exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, one thing I again, what we've always talked about on the show is that uh, remember this: Do you see a weapon? And is that weapon a threat to you? Right. You know. Hey. Uh, also remember, you fire on somebody even if they're breaking your house or the signs of forced entry. Okay, good case. But if that door for some reason was unlocked or open and the guy just kind of walked in, yeah, he's wearing pajama pants, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was he a threat? Right. And remember when the police roll up, all they see is a body in your living room and you stand there with a smoking gun. Remember yeah. that. So it's very important to be able to verbalize exactly what happened. Right. And I, mm. I was watching this cool thing uh, Dad was showing to me. This guy, I don't know if you heard of him. His name is Masada Yub. You ever heard yeah, of this guy? I think so. He's like one of the top guys for like like these shooting situations, uh-huh. like tactics and mm-hmm. training, and also like the legal side of it mm-hmm. and all the stuff. He's a uh, one of the top, if not the top, uh, witnesses yeah. to like expert witnesses. Like if you get in a shooting and you've got the money, you can <coughs> pay him to come out and he'll mm-hmm. like testify. He'll look at the evidence and testify for you. Well, if you pay him properly, thank you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> of um, 
so anyways he i was watching this video dad was showing me uh he was just talking about you know that situation what you say you know when the cops show up mm -hmm. and you know some people have this idea like don't say anything or some people say like i you know, have some like thing you recite like i feared for my life about uh, yeah okay. and, and he's talking about, it made a good, good point about how you know these the police that show up they've heard it all they, yeah you know they're smart they know what's going Be truthful. on truthful so mm -hmm. the, he said that the important thing to do is you don't want to divulge any information that could be skewed by your personal experience through mm -hmm. the adrenaline, right? So yeah. he said if they ask you um, how long did the encounter take place, how many rounds did yeah. you fire, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, things like that that, that you're going to probably have a wrong idea about just yeah. because of the, tense the, adrenaline, yeah. the situation. Yeah. So don't answer those questions. Save okay. that for like later in the yep. report. Mm -hmm. The kind of things you want to tell them is basically like, you know, I heard a noise. Yeah. You know, I went and investigated that noise. You know, a tall individual broke down my door and uh -huh. then there he was. You know, I pulled out my gun and I tried to stop him. Yeah, multiple you know, times for him to stop, show yeah. him his hands. He did not comply. Right, like very came toward me. I was in fear for my life. Like very, like simple kind of. Like, Keep it simple. Yeah. yeah, things like that that you know you're pretty sure about. Just so well, the yeah. cops have some idea of kind of what transpired. Yeah, to I go mean, on. keep it simple. I mean, keep it simple. This is what happened. And if you're telling the truth, which you better be telling the truth. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, if you'll be fine because you're telling the truth and don't get too caught up in the details. Right. Now I will say people make mistakes. Yeah. If you make a mistake, I, you know, if someone did something malicious, I hope they get burned for it. Oh, yeah. But if someone made a legitimate mistake uh, in a situation like that and there was something they did that was wrong, um, I think if that happened to you, your best bet is to just not say anything and just get, yeah. a, get a really good lawyer. Yeah. And then just however it shakes out, that's how it shakes out. You know? uh, yeah. If it's a forced entry, um, people, I think, I think, I think juries are more likely to understand mistakes if there are signs of forced entry. This person did break into your home. Right. And you're in here with a wife or children and you didn't know. Really, somebody breaks into your house, don't go looking for them. Yeah. <laughs> but that's everybody's first impulse. Yeah, you wait God. for them. Yeah. <laughs> call the police and wait for them. Get, hey, honey, call the call police. We're going to sit here and we're going to afford up and we're going to wait for them. Yeah. You know, hey. But don't go out there looking for them because you don't know how many there are. You don't really know where they are right. either. Uh, so wait for them. Call the police. That shows you. That shows you being reasonable too. Yeah, exactly. And I was out there looking. Boy, I, I, he broke into my house. I broke out. You know, you pull back the. You pull the lever. A big wall roll back. And what you gonna, <laughs> I gonna use to blast this guy? Yeah. You don't want to be that guy. You don't yeah. want to be that guy. So. Like that. Um, I don't know if I've shown you this video. I wish our monitor was working. I don't know what you're talking but, about. Yeah. What, <laughs> yeah. That, what, other person, <laughs> the uh, the, what they call it, uh, it's Matt Best. Those okay, guys. I don't know if you want to mention his name. Or no, 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 they, those are, those guys are great. They um, uh, it, it's one of the little funny videos that they, the that guy they could, do. His old lady comes and say, "Hey, somebody just broke their house." They're like, "Yeah," yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I can't decide what gun. You know, what gun am I gonna use? It's, it's like, like we've been waiting for this so long. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you don't be that, but you don't be that guy though. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to have that death before this on a t-shirt on either when the police no. show up. No, no, no. Yeah, and that, that's part of my problem with, like, one of the things in kind of the gun culture that annoys me mm -hmm. is, like, I get it, like, as a as a man who's into guns, like, yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. But I hate seeing some of the, the shirts for sale and some of the signs and things mm -hmm. that are very, like, a, uh, like overly aggressive. Yeah. Like, I don't dial 911. Like, I get it. Ah, uh, yeah. But you should. You, you should not. Right. Like, <laughs> really, do you want to have that in your house? You know, and, uh -huh. and you, well, if you get into a shooting yeah, and the cops are taking a picture of that little metal sign that says that. Because if, uh, especially if you shoot the guy, don't kill him. I'll tell you right now, one thing that the uh, famous attorney, his famous attorney, and they will have an attorney, right. uh, is going to say that, well, he was looking to shoot him. He saw the opportunity, and he, but he's going to completely sidestep the fact that this guy broke into your house. Right. They're going to they're gonna pull out the fact that you're a gun person. Uh, somehow that made it okay that for you. Somehow that made it okay for him to, to forcibly enter your house at yeah. night on the cover of darkness. Right. They're going to find all these podcasts. They're going to be like, <laughs> he was talking about this for years. He's Plotting. Been, he's been waiting, planning waiting, this. Training. <laughs> <laughs> meditating. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, uh, deadly force is an absolute last resort. Uh, that well, I had an incident. So these, I, I told you about those guys came into my house. Mm -hmm, the, uh, the pest control. Yeah, the pest control. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you might want to knock. They didn't know. They didn't know pest control was already in there. <laughs> <I swear. laughs> 
say. And I, you know, I, I could keep out blasting with twin forty fives. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> I think I'm a level headed rational. Yeah. I put that gunpoint. What are you doing in my house? <laughs> Uh, dude, it's like you say, you're wearing the old pest control shirt. So was the old pest control, uh, the, yeah, the, my house trick, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not falling for that one. <laughs> not after what happened last time. <laughs> That's right. so get out of here, you. <laughs> and I called the police. They came out there, checked it out, and they went and got on the owners, but for not announcing that they were going to come into my house. Oh, so yeah. if you rent or own, a rent or whatever you're doing, they just can't barge in there. Yeah. They have to contact and they, it. Yeah. And they'll do it. Yeah. I, I had I had that almost happen to me one time. They didn't actually come in, but uh, the guy was, I lived in this apartment on East Tennessee with some other people when I was in college. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those uh, like three story yeah. apartments. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a, it's like a very small, but tall apartment. Mm -hmm. You ever seen those where you got like a basement level and everything. So I was living on the upstairs level and it had, there was like two bedrooms upstairs and my bedroom was right up from the stairs. So yeah. there's like, as soon as you open the front door, stairs, and then my be bedroom door is right there. So just straight shot. So I hear a knock on the front door on the out from the outside. You know, I hear a guy knock. He said, pest control. And I was like, I don't have time to do this right now. I was the only one home. I was like, yeah. I don't have time to do this right now. Mm -hmm. I got stuff to do. So I'm just going to ignore him and he'll go away. So I ignored him. And then... He come and he just comes on in with his key. Oh, dude! And I was like, oh uh, man, uh, no! And uh, I didnn't like that. That made me no. uneasy. Like I already knew he was pest control. Yeah, but, but still. still, I didn't. That made me a little uneasy. Mm -hmm. And I had my Glock 19 at the time. It was the only handgun I had. Oh, Glock! Did you okay. kill him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna tell people that. Back then. That's right. Uh, so he, uh, so then he came in and knocked on my door. It's one of those interior doors. So like a loud bang, 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 press uh, control. Oh, dude. Uh, uh, so uh, I racked around uh -huh, uh -huh. from the, from the other side of the door. Uh -huh. And then he was like, oh, hey, you know, sorry, but sorry, man. And I, yeah, I bet you are. And then, <laughs> and then when I opened the door, he was at the bottom of the stairs all of a sudden. <laughs> That's right. But. I, you know, I didn't brandish or anything, you know, but uh, it got his attention. But, you know, it's funny. Like, he was really cool about it, and we ended up being really good friends after that. Well, because that. he understood. I mean, you know, hey, people yeah. are usually reasonable, want to know. Yeah, because he was, like, the maintenance guy for the whole the whole place. Yeah. And, you know, looking at it from his perspective, like, all right, he's got to do pest control on these places today, and he's just trying to get it done. Mm -hmm. And he won't have to, have to call people and do all this kind of stuff, and he's just mm -hmm. trying to get in and get it done. You know, so I get it, you know, from his perspective. Yeah. But still, it's like, hey, you know. At the same time, he won't enter your place without uh, properly identifying yeah. you. Like, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have any more problem out of those pest control guys after my <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right this way. So, why? Wow, thank you, yeah. sir. <laughs> <laughs> they, like, call you when they're on the way. They call you when they get there. You Smoke know? signals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put a note on the door. <laughs> wait three, wait three hours. Okay, Are you sure? <laughs> so yeah, uh, hey, there's, yeah. A, there's a way to do anything. Yeah. Uh, again, responsibility, the right thing, the right way. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, I didn't get it set up for this show, but on one of the next ones, we got to play uh, Battlefield One. Cool. On video. Oh, that's a new one, right? Yeah. Okay. That's World War, World War One, isn't it? Yeah. Oh my god. It's really cool. Oh uh, yeah. I don't know if we talked about it on the show or not yet, but I'm very excited the, about I it. I saw the advertisements. Uh, what Call of Duty's with the space now? Oh my. Oh god. yeah. Oh, well, god. you know, it's funny. I was actually looking at this article uh, just the other day because because Battlefield One is is great, and it's got actually. I went through a phase where I wasn't playing video games much anymore, mm -hmm. but it kind of got me back into them a little bit because mm -hmm. it's so much fun. It, it's like it's what I liked about the old ones, you mm -hmm. know. And Battlefield is probably the most realistic of like the games like that. Okay, I think um, so. You know, Call of Duty keeps going future, more and more futuristic. Well, they I think they re they re redid the Modern Warfare three. They, yeah, they did. Uh, which I'm interested to see how that turns out. Yeah, for some reason. And, so well, um, that was yeah one of the good ones. Everybody hates this new one, but but I did some research because I was like, why are they doing this? And I and I found that um, apparently they had some big contract. Mm -hmm. So like. By the time they found out that the futuristic games and the modern games are kind of like out and people wanted the historical ones yeah. again, it was too late. They already had these other games that they had to produce, you know. Mm. But the next game uh, for Call of Duty, I was reading, is going to be based in Vietnam. Oh, they did that. Um, it was like a, it was like Black one, Ops. But it was like one level or something. Yeah, it was like uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. That was Vietnam based. Yeah, was it? 
Okay. Early 60s. Uh, yeah, early 60s. It didn't okay. say Vietnam. It yeah, said, yeah. It said, <laughs> <laughs> well, had that, there was that one level where you're like in the jungle. Yeah, Vietnam, yeah. But most like, of it was kind of. You know, kind of early 60s, you know. Hey, you know. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but I started out sure my age again. <laughs> it was with the old uh, the old uh, the first generation World War Two. You yeah. know, I, mean, I think they came out right after Saving Saving Private Ryan came yeah. out. You know, the tanks were like all blocky. And, yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they were great games because like you could actually drive a tank in one of them. I mean, yeah. hey, yeah, great stuff. Hey, eh? yeah, I'll tell you. Uh, I think we talked about this before too. Is the, uh, the Brothers in Arms series were really good. Mm-hmm. The one. Um, I want to say it's something blood is the last one that they did i can't think of it it's like the third one brothers oh yeah 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 brothers uh, and blood is that it brothers in arms Both. uh yeah it's uh, based off the 101st uh 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 damn what was the last one uh that's what i'm trying to think of what Jesus. it was called uh blood wrote, upon the risers no. Uh, yeah, that was it. What? No, it was, not, it was like song. Bloody not, Gulch. It was road something. Bloody Gulch. Road Hell's Highway. Hell's Highway. That's Hell's it. Highway. Yeah. yeah. Uh yeah, they did a lot of uh um it was different yeah, and there's a lot of uh, POV type stuff, uh, you could, point of view type yeah. stuff, and uh, a real bloody game. I mean, yeah, dude, dude, a lot of explosions, decapitation. I mean, hey, oh, this yeah. is uh, the, pretty violent, but it is war, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The AI I thought was pretty good on that one. Yeah, I, you know. they, but they did away with it, didn't they? Or they just stopped. Yeah, they're going to come out with a new one, I think, at some point. Oh, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's what doesn't make playing online so much fun. Is because it's hard to have like really good AI in those games. You can't, uh, you can't go wrong. World War Two. No. You can't go wrong. I mean, no. it's been seventy years now. You can't go. What's what this week? Seventy fifth anniversary of uh, Pearl Harbor. Oh yeah, uh, sorry. Right. You can't go wrong. Hey, that's uh, like one of the most iconic eras in human turning point history of Bankai. Hey, yeah. There's before and then there's after. So exactly, yeah, and it's also something about. I mean, World War One is when warfare was really starting to change. You mm-hmm. were starting to introduce, you know, semi-automatics and machine guns mm-hmm. and things like that. But World War Two, I feel like, was really when you hit like the, kind of the modern weapons era. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was just like the very early age of modern weapons. And uh, again, it was just uh, it was a uh, I don't want to say high water mark, but uh, nothing was the same afterwards. Right. So. Uh, oh yeah, you can't any kind of game where people get a piece get a piece of that. People feel like they you know be part of it. Like you seen uh, Hacksaw Ridge yet? No, I, everyone says it's great. I want to gotta watch it. Great movie, scary, a lot of hand to hand stuff. Oh, oh my God. man! So we can imagine what it was like back then. Not really. Yeah. And do we really want to? I mean, oh. Oh no. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, the hand to hand stuff is is scary mm. to think about. Uh, I talked to this old trooper, this eighty second guy from. Uh, Years ago, he's got to be gone now. Jeez. <laughs> he was, uh, the guy was like five, 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 120 pounds, World War II paratrooper with four combat jumps. Holy crap. Wow. Uh, the guy was, even at like 75, 80, the guy was rock hard, even after all these years. Yeah. I mean, he could just you know, run four miles, run five, six miles, no problem. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, he talked about being in uh, uh, Sicily. Uh, in 1943, jumping in, going hand to hand, fight the Germans and the Italians. The Italians wow. weren't no problem because they just kind of gave up. Yeah. But uh, the Germans were uh, were extra tough. Yeah. They talk about fighting them hand to hand, and these guys at the time were like 17, 18. Wow. I can't imagine. And the way they utilized machine gun nests and stuff. Oh yeah. Was, uh, oh, terrifying. You know. That, that MG42, what 29 yeah. rounds a second. Yeah. Come which, around a corner, and those things are just spraying everywhere. Which the, the, doctrine has went away from that. Because uh, the way the Germans used it, and they still use it today, uh, it's like a big shotgun. You spray enough bullets, you're going to hit something. Yeah. Problem is, you're not mobile, and you better have a whole bunch of ammo behind you. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's more effective in the long run, when you're playing a long game, to have a weapon that shoots slower, and it's more accurate. Yeah. So, do, it's do a trade off. People think differently now. Yeah. And at the time, I guess it was a pretty good strategy. I mean,. I mean, you got, what, 600 guys coming at you? Just start spraying 28 rounds a second. You're going to hit something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a few things. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but now it's more about accuracy now. Accuracy. Right. Like that, uh, what's that uh, That new uh, M16, M4 type weapon that, that the HEK makes? The 415? Yeah, the, or 416? Is that? I don't know. 415, yeah. 416. Something like that. Uh, it's uh, all the special operations guys are going to that. Uh, it's very familiar because it looks just like an M4, but it's made by H and K. 
Okay. Our irony that the American military is using a German made weapon now, but hey, yeah. <laughs> they make some great guns. I'll tell you. I mean, hey. <laughs> yeah, they do. They make great guns. I hate admitting that, but uh, <laughs> yes, they do. I mean, yeah. What is, I wonder what the German machine gun is now. Do you know? They, uh, they still, from, my, from what I understand, they still use the, uh, the, uh, the, the M- MG42. Well, understand. You ain't going to see too much offensive action by the German army anymore. Oh, yeah. People get kind of nervous when the Germans start talking about <laughs> offensive actions. You yeah, know? yeah. So, uh, uh, I would think, surely, they use something more modern than that. Because look, as far as machine gun, last I checked, which has been a few years, as far as their, their standard machine gun, now, I don't know about their, their, uh, their, their standard infantry weapon, but as far as machine gun, automatic yeah. weapon, for what they use it for, you can't beat that MG42. You still can't. Yeah, 70, 70 years later, you can't beat it for what they use it for. Yeah. Um, I wonder what they. I know a lot of the ones that I've heard about that people. I know that people own. Uh, they have like reliability issues with them, all this kind of stuff. One of that's just because they're kind of built from weird mix max parts and stuff. If, I'm thinking parts and maintenance going to be a problem. The original uh, ones maybe were they more reliable? I guess. Uh, I'm guessing because the 42 replaced the 34. Uh, the MG 34 was better made, from what I understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the 42 high rate of fire but it was easier to produce they, you could you could produce a lot more of them when you're fighting a world war it's about production right that's what guys that's what got the germans beat uh, as far as tanks couldn't keep the, up with us german tanks were great excellent they but they couldn't get away from that engineering excellence yeah sherman tanks turn out fifty thousand of them no problem it's right. good enough yeah exactly it's good enough we're lucky that uh the, that the germans weren't the nazis you know weren't smarter about the way they went about things because mm-hmm. if they had like you know, just taking over, you know, France or a few other, you know, other bigger countries and just kind of set tight for a little okay, bit. Okay, I'm done. I got it. And then kind of built up their resources mm-hmm. and then, you know, just kind of spread that way instead of trying to literally take over the, you know, all of Europe and uh, all of the world well, at one the, time. it's the leadership. One person in particular. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that messed them over. <laughs> you know what's interesting about Hitler? is like, you know, he was... <laughs> a, he was a bad person for what he did, and mm-hmm. he was a bad leader in a, in a lot of ways. Well, he was a political genius. I'll give him. I'll give that up to him. The guy yeah. was a political genius, and you put that guy from a crowd, you couldn't touch him. Yeah. But a lot from a lot of the reading I've done, if you talked, if you met him individually, not that impressive. Yeah. One on one. Uh and also bad decisions. Yeah. Uh the British and the Americans wanted to assassinate him. As the war went on, but he started making these bad calls. They said, "You know what? Let's leave him there." Yeah, because someone better might come in, and or he's it's more beneficial to us to let that guy stay in charge. Yeah, he's making all these bad calls. He wouldn't listen to his boys, which worked out for us. Yeah, uh, and uh, and we keep forgetting in his second book, which wasn't published, he stated very plainly he was going to invade the United States. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm oh. sure he would have. Why not? I took Europe. Yeah. Hey, why not? Was that called Mind Sequel? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Something Thank you. close. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> the Man in the High Castle. Oh, God. Have you seen that show? Uh, no, uh, no, I haven't. I, but I've got to now because I'm kind of wondering how would the Germans, the Japanese, the Germans, the Nazis, and the Imperial Japanese get along? Uh, they don't really. They just split it up. Yeah, you got, I got Asia. You got Europe. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, and there's, well, you have to watch. It's it's interesting. You know, I, I didn't just love it or anything. It mm-hmm. was, I kind of was expecting a little more, but it was really cool. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I think there's supposed to be a season two. Uh, I'll check it out now, especially. Uh, one problem a lot of people have with the Imperial Japanese at the time is that they perverted Bushido. You know, the samurai code, which yeah. is very honorable, very, uh, you know, it's about service. Right. You know, they, and they perverted, the, the uh, Imperial Japanese perverted it to serve their purpose. So, yeah. uh, uh, they turn it. They turn the samurai Bushido into something that it wasn't. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like with the kamikaze pilots and stuff. Mm-hmm. Which terrified the Americans when they first started doing that in '44. Yeah. Uh, that terrified the Americans. They thought the public could handle it. I mean, this is 1944. What? Yeah. Jumping up, people want to jump on a plane and fly it, and crash it into ships. What? Yeah. Now we go. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, because well, I mean, with we're, terrorism, it's kind of we're a little bit jaded now. I think. Yeah, you know that's that's what's interesting is like, no one uh, like on nine eleven. I don't remember anyone ever saying the word kamikaze. <laughs> no. 
<laughs> you know, I don't think anyone called it that, but that no. is what it was. I think a lot of people on the ground, from what I understand, thought it was like, it was like a movie because of our media now, our movies, Hollywood. Mm-hmm. We we see that we're like, is this a movie? I mean, is this being filmed? Yeah, is this CGI? I mean, like no one told us they were. Yeah, you know, Michael Bay was shooting a movie or something. That's right, exactly. I mean, it, I've heard more than one person say that was the initial feeling. Yeah, that this is is not real. I can't even imagine what it would have been like to, to actually been on the streets, you know, when oh, that yeah. was that was going down. It had to have felt so incredibly unreal. I mean, or in the World Trade Center. Yeah, oh. yeah. I mean, you know, it's just a regular day in, in New York, and all of a sudden, mm. you know, the two biggest buildings are blowing up and crashing to the ground. I mean, the, the, what that must have sounded like and yeah. all but, the dust that was everywhere. Believing it. I think believing it would be your biggest thing. The biggest hurdle to get over is believing that this actually happened. What's yeah. for me? Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's just crazy, you know. And I guess there's probably still a lot of. Uh, well, it's been long enough now. I guess there's still probably like police officers and firefighters. <coughs> and I guess still on the job that were there, you know. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think policing and uh, emergency services have changed a whole lot just because of that. Right. I mean, the, uh, I think the police take a lot of flack about being militarized. No, you say that until something happens and they're not prepared. Right. Then they're now they're the Keystone cops. Which, right. Does anybody get that reference? Besides, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I don't have a problem with uh, law enforcement being militarized. I just have a problem with the public being demilitarized. Okay, good point. <laughs> good point. Good I think point. we should both be militarized. I mean, um, I mean, like, uh, uh, okay, I'm not going to say anything about that place, but I saw this incident in this certain place in yeah. the Midwest, and the cops rolled out with the armored vehicles. And all that, and the uh, military gear, and a lot of people are like, "Oh my God, the cops are the army!" No, they're not. Yeah, they're the police. And I don't think you should, you should send uh, regular officers up against people with ARs. Right. You know, we gotta be. You got to be. You have, you have to be at the same level they're at. Right. Yeah. It should be situational. Yeah. You know, you don't want to have a bunch of you know armored vehicles showing up for a traffic stop. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you turn not yeah. on my watch. <laughs> 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 Yeah, we don't take that route here. <laughs> It'd be like playing Grand Theft Auto. And you just like punch somebody, and all of a sudden you get like six stars. You know? <laughs> so yes, it's situational. Yeah, yeah. Appro- appropriate response. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'd say on Grand Theft Auto, man, it gets out of hand fast. Once, oh, once yeah. the fast rope guys start coming down, <laughs> you're, like, you're done. <laughs> like uh, oh, great movies. Rob me a great movie. Uh, Heat. Yeah, with uh, De Niro and uh, Val Kilmer, that bank robbery scene. Oh, dude! Oh yeah, uh, which, which I understood the guys from the North Hollywood shootout watched that movie before they did before they did their uh, their robbery. Oh man, it was scary. Okay, and there were guys out there. Hey, I saw this movie. Uh, we're gonna do our robbery just like that. Yeah, scary. Didn't work out too well for them. But no, they, no, they wrecked mm-hmm. a lot of havoc. But oh yeah, they didn't get anywhere. Uh, yeah, they, but I think that the incident again. I think we talked about it before that incident. Uh, Show law enforcement that you have to be prepared for the for the for the for the crook that you're going to face. Right. If they had they had fully all Mac AKs in California. Yeah. Oh my God. And then the cops started firing with their Berettas. Yeah. They work out too well initially. Right. Well, that that's the thing. You know, they there's so many uh, situations where you know just talking about like with gun control, so many situations mm-hmm. where. Guns are like highly restricted, but they still get full. Yeah, auto. Like, if you got the cash, you'll get whatever you need. Like in Paris, you know, they yeah. had full. Those guys had full auto AKs. Mm-hmm. If, if anything, um, the availability, the ready, the uh, ready availability of semi-automatic rifles almost makes it uh, more common for people to have semi-automatics because they're legal. And that thing in Paris, I mean, that's one of the most restrictive, they have the most restricted gun control in the world. Right. And those guys had no problem. Right. And, they, they and that's why they didn't have some automatics probably because they're like, well, if we're going to get these rifles, might as well like, go full full auto. And I believe- uh, Not that they're more dangerous or anything. But. Until then, uh, Paris police could not take their weapons home at night. Oh, wow. Well. Uh, now they can. Well, yeah, thank that, you. Uh, change, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Man. What's this I hear about California wanting to su- succeed? Oh, they should. <laughs> <laughs> They go make things a lot easier. For everybody. I heard that they want to succeed. Okay, we've been down this road before. <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay, boys and girls, we went over this about what 150 years ago. Yeah, we, we've been over this. Yeah. No, sorry. Hey, you know it's fine with me. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I like. We won't miss you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of uh, states having more power. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I go. It's something I go back and forth on all the time, but. 
I feel like that's probably the only answer is more states' rights. Yeah, I would like this. Like what Trump's talking about this national right to carry. I, I would I, that would be natural good. Recipro- natural reciprocity. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, like that would be good for me personally. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that'd be good for me and other people who carry guns because mm-hmm. then now we can go into all these different states and mm-hmm. carry a gun. But at the same time, um, you know, if it was something different that we didn't like, well, we like the idea of you know being forced to comply with something that some other state had decided was okay. <coughs> so I mean, I like it. I hope it goes through. Yeah. But I'm just kind of like, you know, you know, if 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 we really get into a jam with gun rights, because there are some states that really have made it pretty clear that they are not going to respect the Second Amendment. And I don't know, that would be pretty tough to, to get reversed. And I would rather, like, California become Australia for gun laws okay. than the entire country, you okay. know, become a, you know, a place that has less gun well, rights. Well, California and New York, it's not that you can't have them. It's just May issue. You have to justify Right, um, you which know. means you're not going to get it. <laughs> Basically, is what that means. Um, in your home, it's fine, you know. But uh, you know, the, the carry concealed—that's that's the issue. Yeah, they have, and uh, yeah, in these states, people get all the weapons they want. If they got the criminal element, anyway, they've got them. Yeah. Gets all the weapons they want. You know. Well, what's crazy is, uh, you know, I don't know if it's still like this, but I know at least for a while in Chicago. Um, to have a shotgun in your house, you had to have it locked up, like under the, you know, I guess it could be anywhere, but it had to be mm-hmm. locked up without uh, any ammo in it. Chicago, because of the um, because of the the violence level, especially gang level violence in Chicago, that's what that's what led to that. Um, yeah, which is it's like you think it'd be the opposite. It's like you should be required. <laughs> to have Why a, don't you have a gun? Yeah. Like, like Kennesaw, Georgia. What you ain't got no gun? Yeah, th- <laughs> that's what I understand. It's like wow, this place is dangerous. We should. We should tell people who follow laws that they shouldn't have guns. <laughs> it really should be like, wow, this place is dangerous. Everyone should have guns. Strap up, everybody. <laughs> Let's go. You know, huh? Because the, the real dangerous people ha- will have them either way. So you're just yeah. you know, limiting. The criminal element's not going to be concerned with, with your gun right. laws. They're going to do what they have to. Right. Ugh. And that's, that's kind of my, my thing is like, uh, with, like with the felon thing. Yeah. I would rather them say, now – I would I could get behind something like if you are a violent felon, like if you've committed some type of act of violence uh, with or at least aggravated assault with mm-hmm. any type of if you've ever used a weapon of any kind to hurt somebody, mm-hmm. then yeah, that person you know is definitely someone we shouldn't don't want to trust with a gun. Yeah, you know, but if you're just some guy that you know like you sold pot when you were twenty, park tickets, wrote a bad <laughs> check, yeah, <laughs> whatever you know, something you did that, you know led to a felony. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, who's to say that guy doesn't need to protect himself? Also, you know, well, yeah. So it seems a little bit, a little bit unfair. You know, again, uh, the reason of being reasonable, being responsible. Uh, I think what people are afraid of is that if you have a track record of not being reasonable and responsible, eh, maybe you shouldn't have a weapon. But it's debatable. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it's true. I, I, and you know, I'll beat this dead horse. I blame most <laughs> of, most of these problems that we have um with with poverty yeah. and and violence mm-hmm. um and uh what else i guess mostly those two poverty and violence <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i think that the uh the drug war is one of the biggest things that attributes to both of those things because the so the um making drugs illegal right it, it's like a um, it's it's like you're taking people who are very poor mm-hmm. and you're just hanging this carrot right over their head yeah like, don't you go for this carrot. You go for that carrot. Mm-hmm. You're going to be in a real jam, but we're going to keep hanging it right over. And, and it's just like the amount of money that, that you can make off of selling drugs is just so hard for people to say uh, no to it. I thought that's the way it was going. You know, like Colorado, what, California. Yeah, it is, go, it is going that way. Yeah. But it, but the thing is, it's you know, it'll eventually have to happen with all drugs for it to really change. And a lot of the a lot of the gun violence is getting blamed on people like us. Mm-hmm. You know, it's because of the the drug trade, the, the money fact, in the drug. Yeah. yeah, the fact that it's all happening on the street. You know, mm-hmm. when if it was something where, you know, it was cleaned up and you know you could buy any drug. You think it sounds terrible. It sounds terrible to say like <coughs> people should have a right to buy mm-hmm. things like meth and heroin, mm-hmm. and, you know, and stuff like that. But the, but people are going to get it anyway. Take the part, it's about taking the profit of it. Right, you take the you take the money out of the hands of the criminals, mm-hmm. and you put it in people who are not going to cause violence mm-hmm. uh, to each other. Then what you do is you eliminate that 
um, that urge of like, like if you're growing up in some poor area mm-hmm. and you don't have a lot of opportunities, you know that you can sell drugs and make a lot of money. Yeah. But if you don't, if you know that's not even a possibility, that the only kind of like crime that you could really do are like more like aggressive types of, mm-hmm. of things. Because it doesn't take an aggressive person to sell drugs. Okay, I right? guess. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it doesn't. You know, like if if think about it, if if you could, if you're like, I'm going to do a crime, and if there was, if drugs were illegal, we're not going to make money selling drugs. You're going to yeah. have to do stuff like you know, rob places and rob people. It's stuff that's like a lot more mm. intense, and most people aren't going to do that. You know, a question though, I got to wonder now. Places like uh, Colorado, uh, the uh, the dope guy. How does he uh, does that take? Does he lose, does he lose his profit now that it's legal? Um, I think I've heard that they, you know, there's still I'm sure a street, you know, business for it. Mm-hmm. But I think you know it just undercuts it, makes it. I'm sure it's diminished. It has to have. I mean, now because uh, this guy who was involved in a certain type of business told right. me out in uh, this certain part of town, he told me once that uh, dispensaries are for people who don't want to worry about look, you know, you know, meeting somebody somewhere right. or worried about law enforcement. They want to. They want. They won't be like going to the store. Right. Uh, go in there after Kroger's. I will stop by the dispensary on the way home. Pay for this. Get that. Go home. They want no problems. Uh, and he says there'll always be an illegal element to it because they can always undersell uh, legal weed because right. legal weed's expensive from what I understand. It is more expensive, but I think most people though it's it's worth it. To yeah, not-, not have to worry about. It. I'm just gonna go by the store and get it. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, just the, most of the cost in illegal drugs is the fact that it's illegal. It's not like <laughs> the drugs are that hard to produce, you know. <laughs> so I, I would imagine that, like in a place like Colorado, I would think that the street price for weed has got to be incredible, incredibly low. Yeah, you, know, you know, almost giving it away, right? Dispensers yeah. on the side of the street, you know, like yeah. come off. <laughs> It's like uh, ten bucks for a handful. Uh, that's right. <laughs> Just carry around a bucket. That's right. That's right. So, <laughs> so, uh, Wait a minute, you got really big hands. Right. You come here. Yeah. <laughs> extra five bucks. <coughs> oh, so, uh, the other countries have a different attitude. Uh, I'll show you the picture. This picture one day from Afghanistan with these guys in this uh, this uh, hemp <coughs> feel, right? Yeah. <laughs> And they said, okay, everybody has your pockets. Okay. <laughs> Keep walking. Don't stop. <laughs> and we're like, uh, what do you use this for? He goes, uh, feed. Uh, feed for what? Cows. They use it for cat cattle fodder there. Oh. I'm like, the one of these cows seem all chilled out. I mean, just, yeah. ah, you don't move, man. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> it's cool, man. Slaughterhouse, ah, it's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, oh, they're like, "What's the problem? We feed yeah. dry cows all the time here." Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> of course, it could just be the. Uh, I think there's a certain version of the plant that doesn't actually have the the drug in it. So ah, it no be. fun there. That's right. So, uh, that's right. Yeah, all right. It's not yeah. an alcoholic yeah. weed. What? <laughs> what is this? Near weed? <laughs> yeah, they're like Oduls is going to have their own brand. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so yeah, so. yeah. But uh, like uh, what we talked about this, what Holland. Um, the Netherlands. Um, uh, I think they are pretty much just whatever you want to. Oh, is that where Amsterdam is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I think the attitude's different though. It, it, it's your business if you, uh, want to do this. But they still think that you're not the best person. Yeah. You know, it's not a good thing, but it's your business. Right. And that's the attitude they take. You know, like you know, I'm not going to sit here and rig. You're a grown person. If you're going, if you want to behave irresponsibly, that's on you. Right. So, which I think is a mature attitude to take. Yeah, definitely. You know, like, okay. Yeah. Can, Except for with marijuana, because there are actual, like, medical benefits. Like, yes. Like, with yes. seizures. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. You know, like, I know. Glaucoma. It's, yeah. Like, like, in Tennessee, um, it's, like, ever so slightly medical. Like, you can't just go get it like you can in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, now it's, rec is legal there, too, now. But um, it's, like, if you have seizures, they give you this, like, oil or something like that. Yeah. And it it really helps with that. Mm-hmm. And, like, um Oh, uh, what's the other one with like if you're getting chemotherapy and there's lots of mm-hmm. different things like that that it actually helps with. But they still still schedule one. Uh, so the cigarettes are okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah, and alcohol. You know. Oh yeah, come on now, don't go it's near that. Man, cigarettes don't free your mind, man. <laughs> <laughs> the government doesn't want us. <laughs> so. So, 
uh, yeah, I think a good point. If you take the profit, well, so most of the profit out of it, that'll get rid of a lot of the, uh, yeah. a lot of the issues. Yeah, that's, uh, why, that's why they don't want us to have guns because guns free your mind. You that's know? right. Yeah, man. <laughs> Since I got this gun in my hand, I start seeing things clear. That's right. You know? It's all clear to me now. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I can see through the facade. That's right. So. <laughs> So, I don't know. Let's hope for the best. I mean, I, again, I saw that on some of the social media that uh, California wanted to uh, succeed. Yeah, right. Okay. The problem with states' rights, if they're taking federal money, they can't, you know, be biting the hand that's feeding them. Yeah. You know, hey, come on now. We want to do it our way. Well, stop taking our money. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And which is kind of weird in a way. You would think that it would be backwards. Like, you think, if anything, the states would be paying the federal government the other way around. Like, like uh, Chris, someone's probably, I, like, I don't understand that much about the, <laughs> the way the, the country way taxes works. work. Yeah, uh, and all that stuff. Know, so civics, this, I'm at a loss. So I might be walking into a complete just you know, ignorant state. It has but, civics class since the eighth grade. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. But if you think about it like uh, America, like a business, which it kind of is to an extent, if each state is like its own company mm -hmm. under that umbrella, in, in a way, it's like, the states should be making money, should be pro profitable, and then kicking, you know, kicking up to, you know, the federal government. Oh know? yeah, they do. They, I mean, is that, is, is, I'm pretty that sure way? that's how it works. I'm not sure, but pretty sure that's how it works. Okay. It's so confusing. You know, it's like money is coming all these state, different federal directions. federal taxes, and, and I think the benefits that the state gets is that you know you get some of what you give to the federal government back, and you know, money for highways, bridges, buildings, civil, yeah. civil projects. It's a it's a mutual. You know, one union, hey, yeah. everybody helps everybody else. And uh, that's like I hear people talk about succeeding. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I just went to Fort Sumner, and we know how that worked out. Dudes. Yeah. Uh, plus, again, uh, okay, if so, California, I heard a rumor, they won't succeed. Okay. All right. No more federal money for you. All right. And that means everybody that's getting federal benefits in your state is going to have to get it from uh, the state of California now. That ain't going to work. No, no. No way. Happen. No way. It's just because of all this Trump stuff, you know, and everything. Uh, everybody. God, here we go. And, uh, on, yeah, a, really. on a hot, on a bright note, uh, hey, Cuba. Hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Cuba. Yeah. Hey. Oh, yeah, that's right. Castro. Is Castro good, kicked yeah. off. Uh, yeah. Man, if I was, uh, what's his brother's name? Uh, Raul. Yeah. Raul uh, <laughs> Castro. <laughs> he's like really old, too. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. he's put, yeah. He, but I think I hope I'm hoping he's more reasonable. Cuba is a gold mine. Yeah, vacation Quitty. spots, cigars, you know, like rum and oh, they man. were. I mean, they were corrupt before, before uh, Fidel got in power. Yeah, but they were a travel destination from hell. I mean, yeah. it would be great. It, it's a gold mine. Wouldn't it happen? How great would it be to rent out some little little villa on the uh, beach? You know, the you beach know, in Havana. Yeah, cigars. cigar. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah rum. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's good to be the king. <laughs> it's good to be the hookers. king. Hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Cuban hookers. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, what, were you, what were you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted. <laughs> so, so that'd be an excellent trip. Uh uh, just the uh, the ambiance, of yeah. Cuba, you know, old world. Uh, oh yeah, uh, all those old cars. Uh, and it will, be, it, I think, it will be mutually benefit. Yeah, be a bit beneficial. Uh, it'd be great for us to go down there. Great for them that we're coming down. There. Great. Yeah. Uh, and if Raul wants to stay, you know, wants to keep control of it, he can use the China model. The China model. They're not the Chinese. Aren't really communist. They're just uh, they strictly regulate everything. They're I think they're communist in name only. Because, I think well. Um, I think it's like they're they're like a common they're like capitalist in in behavior. Yeah. But uh, communist, communist but communist in like regu yeah, in regulation. I guess that's what you just said. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, you can be free enterprise, but don't say too much there. Don't say what we don't like and don't say too much of it. Yeah, yeah, something like and that. And like they regulate internet access too. Yeah. yeah, but that's not communist stuff. You know, it's strange the I don't want to get into communism, but People are like, yeah, they they regulate people like communists do, but communism really was, you know, the word based on the word community, guys. Yeah, true. <laughs> the real they're not true. Would be like, uh, you know, taking care of the seniors when they get sick. Yeah, you know, they're not true communists. You're right. Communists. The, the, Rus <laughs> the Russians weren't either. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, not at all. They had their version of it. Right. So. It's just a a word people like to throw around. I think yeah. what uh, Raul needs to do is the same thing the Chinese did. We're going to be capitalists, but we're not going to say that word. Yeah. We'll use the other C word. Well, it's like all these things sound like they start out uh, sounding great. You know, like I've talked about this before, I think, on the show, but you know, capitalism and socialism both have their downfalls. Yeah. 
you know, well, I'm not going to get that again, but it, it starts out like capitalism. Oh, that sounds mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. We just get to capitalize on all the resources mm -hmm. and all the fruits of our labor. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. You know, socialism, it's like, oh, yeah, we're a social being. We all take care of each other. It and sounds all. great. It, yeah. It, it, they both sound perfect, but oh, yeah. they're not no. at all. Human nature for the biggest reason, human nature. Yeah, people uh, abuse things. I work car and I got mine. Why can't you get yours? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of like, um, man, I set up to do an example and then just lost it. <laughs> but it's it's like uh, human nature is going to find any little crack in yeah. any kind of system, and it's just going to just come pouring through. Not everybody gets taken along. That's the problem we have with capitalism is that it ain't good for everybody. Global, right. Globalization isn't good for everybody. Right. Uh, people, Some people get left behind, and those are people get mad. Right, and then in socialism, it's kind of the other way around. People don't get get to get ahead for their hard yeah, work. Yeah, it's like, you know, I bust, I bust my butt. I'm out here, you know, kicking butt, and then I still live in the shack like everybody else. It's yeah. like there are two types of – not awesome people. One, <laughs> one of the types takes advantage of capitalism. One of the types <coughs> takes advantage of communism. So, yeah. Oh my God! So, so hopefully, if I was, uh, you know, had access to Raul, I said, "Hey, man, look, we got a gold mine here. Look, yeah, let's let's get the people that run Vegas. We'll get them in here. Oh wait, that's just what they did before, wasn't it? Vegas yeah. used to run Havana, and then uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, let's scratch that example. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, I said there was some kind of way where you could have like a system that's that's like has a layer of social. Well, I guess sort of America is like that, but like a layer of socialism and capitalism, where where it's like at our core we're like capitalists, but there's this like socialism safety net. You know, the prob and that's a problem that uh, that I saw when I was in uh, Europe when the wall came down in '89, uh, and I, the same thing that happened in Cuba. Is that people get in communist countries? It's free medical, dental, health benefits. Everything's just right there. Yeah, uh, free but not good. Give and take. <laughs> it's free. You know, it's, it's free. Yeah. Now, you're right. You're right. Not good, yeah. but free. No, wait, wait. I take that back. Cuban healthcare is excellent, in many ways better than what we have here. But you know, you have to wait for. You need this. You have to wait. You have to sign up. You have to wait. Um, you're right. You get what you pay for. Yeah. But uh, the Cuban healthcare system is renowned for its quality. Huh. But they don't have the same te level of technology that we have. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to say this. American technology is very expensive, but is it as good as we like to think it is? I think in some cases, yes. But some, you're right. Some cases, yes. I think that in America, you're going to find some of the best versions of of anything. Yeah. But it's not as prevalent as we'd like to think it is. Yes. And may, does everybody have access? Right. Yeah. You know, uh, well, now I saw this, this stat that uh, medical error is the third leading cause of death in America. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay, Doc, what are you doing? Okay, I need a thorough written plan. I want to go over it first. <laughs> yeah, but those odds are still better than not going to the doctor. <laughs> That's right. Because <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you got a two-thirds chance if you go to the doctor. 60-30. <laughs> I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I like those odds. Yeah, you put it that way. You know what? Go for it, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to go down to Cuba. We'll do like a live podcast. Down there. I do. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Havana, yeah. on the beach of Havana. Oh, man. man. That'd I'd, be awesome. Oh, uh -huh. I'm there. If they, if they really open it up where you can travel there easily. That, we're, there. Oh, we're there. Oh, man. We're there. I would love to go to Cuba. Tuna Montana was the season left right, right here. <laughs> 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 we're going to San Juan Hill. <laughs> we're going to Guantanamo. Come on, dude. Oh, you watch. The Cubans, like, when they find out that a bunch of Americans are coming, they're going to probably, they're going to do all kinds of stuff to take our money. Like, they'll... Oh, that's a on. bad thing. They'll, they'll, yeah, they'll build some house and be like, "This is where Tony Montana <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. grew up." You know? That's right. Come on, this is Scarface's <laughs> house, man. Right yeah, here. come on, this gold in the streets. That gold in the streets. Yeah, okay, I'll take that trip. Heck yeah. Yeah. Oh my great. god. Oh yeah. That's the, from the, the Big John show from the top, the top of San Juan Hill. My. Yeah. <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt Road right up here. My. Yeah. We need, let's go to Dubai and do a show there. <laughs> great trip great trip uh well you know until you but don't you stay in the tourist areas now that's what i've heard you don't want to wander off <laughs> yeah. you don't want to wander off that's what i've heard uh i've also heard that there's oh there's this uh you may have seen him patrick there's this comedian that uh i can't remember his name he's pretty successful and he came around to nashville during this thing that uh that chad ryden he's been on the show before uh, and DJ Buck Buckley does called the uh, world. They break the world record. They do like the longest comedy show. It's like ten days or something. Uh -huh. 
and they get some big name people come come through sometimes. But this guy mm-hmm. came through and he's talking about going to Dubai. Is it Ahmed? Ahmed? No, not that guy. Oh, that's, uh, are you serious? What's the name? He's like sort of a little bit of a redneck dude, but his jokes aren't that redneck. Um, he was doing a show. He was doing a comedy show with um, uh, what's his name from the White Stripes? Um, Jack White. Jack Jack White. Like later, like the next day or something. Okay. When I saw him. So he's, he's doing some things. I, I can't remember what his name is now, mm-hmm. but. So anyways, he had this great bit about how uh, he went to Dubai mm-hmm. and getting in the airport and, he's, <coughs> and everyone's like smoking cigarettes like mm-hmm. in the airport and he's just like, we are going to party our butts off here. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and it's like, then you go outside and it's just like police and everywhere and you're like, no, we are not. <laughs> no, no, you yeah. don't. Again, uh, very uh, controlled and people forget it's a Muslim country. They cater to the foreigners, but at the same time, they take... It's a Muslim country. It's very strict, yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched a documentary. Piers Morgan, of all people. I watched a Piers Morgan documentary on it. And they built a uh, a, snow, a, a skiing place there. Yeah. You know, that's cash, dude. That's some yeah. real capital. Oh, yeah. They build, yeah. They're, they, like, dump dirt and stuff out in the water. Oh, uh, yeah. We'll just we'll just build more country. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sam, we got plenty of it. Let's go. Yeah. And uh, I, I was seeing there's these people that, who bought um, houses out there. And they like quadruple their money in you know like five oh, yeah. years stuff like that. It's it's it's, it's the way to go. I yeah. mean, if you can afford to get to Dubai, oh, on the way. In fact, we'll make it a we'll make it a globe trotting thing. We'll yeah, stop yeah. in Cuba. <laughs> all right, uh, me in Cuba. All right, get the plane fired up. We're headed for Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. You know, hey, yeah. where else? Where else? Where else? Come on now, we're <laughs> we're hot. <laughs> the world, big job, world tour. <laughs> Now, what's the budget like for this show? <laughs> I know I'm not getting paid a lot. <laughs> come on, now, come on, dude. I thought I thought we'd be able to do it. Keep the overhead down. <laughs> that's, right, yeah. that's right. We'll have to cut Patrick so we well, can that, No, it. we can do the boat thing. Come on. I hope, you, hope, hope your sailing skills are up. Come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> How many people do you think get on rafts and go to Cuba? <laughs> go to Cuba. <laughs> 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 I wonder if that's going to change now. Probably I mean, not zero. Uh, yeah, you know they're they're all they were coming this way. Now I think people will be going the other well, way. Well, you also got people that were in like in I don't know Miami that got drunk on a tube and just ended Scott, up there. You know, oh, where am I, dude? They speak Spanish. <laughs> well, th- yeah, come yeah. On. It's I like mean, 50s cars everywhere. Yeah. You know, well, again, I heard that those aren't all original parts either, though. No, no. Oh, come on now. No, they make them down there. But that was that's the one sad thing about opening up you know or trade with them is that that'll go away i'm sure well yeah dude come on if i could get a uh a uh the, well, the black impala I, you know, hey. <laughs> yeah you know hey maybe they'll sell them to us <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, yeah hey. i was about to say that they'd probably sell them to us and trade yeah yeah but they got some great ball players down there uh, if i was major league baseball i would be on the first thing smoking to havana dudes where are your teams at yeah, I think got, the the Devil Rays played there this year. Oh, didn't they? Somebody, oh, that's right. Yeah, somebody played down there. Cubans the are Rays. some great ball players. Yeah. In fact, I heard a rumor that uh, I think it's true. Uh, Castro was on the uh, Pittsburgh Pirates farm system, uh, but he got cut. Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we know what what, what else. He went happened on after to that. do bigger and better things. Yeah, he did other that. stuff after that. Something <laughs> I'm not sure. Hey, yeah. but uh, he was uh, he used to pitch for the uh, in the Pirates farm system. They yeah. got some great ball players down there. We need yeah. to get down there and get them, and especially the Braves. They can use, oh, yeah. <laughs> they can use them. <laughs> Speaking of Castro, this has been this, uh, on Facebook. I've been hearing all this, these like people, like, con- conservatives, saying, like arguing against liberals for supporting Castro. And I didn't realize there were any liberals that supported Castro. Uh, me neither. I mean, I, uh, well, I think from, from what I understood, there was a lot of foreign dignitaries, you know, paying their respects, you know, homage yeah. to him. The guy was a was a tyrant. Right, he was a tyrant. Yeah, you know, he was a despot from an Irish. State. Yeah, he was. The, yeah, sending uh, you know, people who were different, who thought differently, to re-education camps. Oh yeah, no, he was. Yeah, Sounds Dick familiar Bear, through and through. <laughs> you know, hey, but I, I don't know. It's like I, I, I never heard any any liberals talk about how great Castor was before he died. Well, I, I think they talk about Shea, they're coming from Shea. Shea uh, yeah, Grimmett. they associate him with Shea, and also the, the that guy was terrible too. Right, the government before Fidel was not good. Yeah, Batista was 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 what. Was he less of a tyrant or more? Probably or more. Or, they, or the different levels of tyrant? I mean, yeah, yeah, different. really. Just different folks. <laughs> <That's Yeah. right. laughs> there were strokes for different uh, folks. The idea of Castro rolled in the town saying, hey, we're going to liberate you, you know, get Batista out of there, all his corruption. Batista messed up. He was taking all that mafia money. If he just spread the stuff around, make sure everybody got a taste, yeah. everybody would have been good. But now he would keep it all for himself. Uh, yeah. uh, Castro rolled in there, overthrew him, and said, okay, we're going to free everybody. 
Once he got in power, you know what? Now that I'm in power, nah, I think I'm going to keep all this for myself. Yeah. And he started the same thing Batista was doing. So Yeah. What is it? How's it go? First you get the money, then you get the power. <laughs> then you get the power, then you get the women. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go. Okay. <laughs> Oh, man. So, I don't know. Cuba going to be interesting. Let's go. I said, yeah. dude, Big John show, Havana, Cuba. Dude. I'd love to. You're going to uh, smoke the cigar and have the uh, the the uh, that, that that island shirt. You know, That's right, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, yeah. The big wicker chairs. <laughs> <laughs> some, yeah. some Cuban rum. You know? That's right. Ah, it is good. <laughs> we can just build a raft and hop on the Cumberland. And- <laughs> That's true, yeah. We'll eventually make our way down. Yeah, the uh, Gulf yeah. Stream will take us out of the Gulf and... It'll, we'll probably go up the coast before we hit Cuba. But well, <laughs> if you overshoot it, though, it's like being in space. You overshoot the moon or something. You know? Dude, uh, overshoot Cuba, next yeah, stop, uh, Venezuela. <laughs> Not a nice place. No. Yeah, I think you would start coming up the Gulf Stream. Uh, the, <laughs> you know, the yeah, the Gulf Stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have to turn south at Key West. We have to sure. go a right turn at Key West. Yeah, you'd uh, go yeah. South. have to make a right. You'd have to do some, <laughs> you'd probably have to do some paddling. Yeah. Yeah. My GPS working on this thing. <laughs> I think the, the Mississippi would just shoot us straight out into the Gulf, and we just stay there until we oh my God. died of dehydration. <laughs> or hurricane. Okay, now it's that time yeah. of year, hurricane? Nah, come on. Or if it's like the movies, a big boat always comes by. Of course. <laughs> uh, Castaway. Yeah, you exactly. The Pacific. Uh, come on, a whale will go get the boat, bring it to you, yeah. apparently. Yeah. I, you know, I'll be honest. If I was in that castaway situation, mm-hmm. um, if you know, because it's a tough, it's a tough call. Stay on the island, you can probably survive for a while. For mm-hmm. a while, until you have some kind of medical issue that you can't deal mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. Um, or cast out in some makeshift boat and Hope. starve to death, de- die of dehydration. I think you go for it because at least you're trying. I, I'm, I'm making progress. I am moving toward. Something. I'm not stuck on a rock in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm going. I'm trying to get home. I don't know if I'd go for it. No, I would. I think yeah. I'd play it safe. No, 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 no. It would have been <laughs> three years, three days. As soon as I find something to build a raft, I'm gone. Yeah, forget forget that. But like, this is my life now. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. No thanks. No thanks. And uh, uh, Tom Hanks did the same thing. He said eventually I would have died on that island. I would have got sick, injured. Something would have happened. Yeah. So it was just a matter of time. I had to get off that island. Yeah. This uh, is true. And I made that, uh, that. I would have made a better boat. I was thinking more time. I made a better boat, though. <laughs> of course, he just happened to have all this knowledge, though. Yeah, I'm like that. His character is very knowledgeable. I'm like, dude, does the average guy know about trade winds and currents and all that? Yeah. Hey, and the other parallel I draw is uh, Twelve Years a Slave. Uh, you can. It would have been twelve minutes a slave. I've been gone. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> no way. <laughs> you would have had a 1911. That's all right. But hey, uh, I guess this. I guess this black powder. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll give you time to load up. Go ahead. Take your time. <laughs> Got some caps here for you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, I, no, I, I couldn't. No, I couldn't have lasted. I love to see. Uh, Certain minorities, ah, oh, you know, I would have went back and did this. No, you wouldn't, <laughs> dude. That's what the first slave said. No, you wouldn't. Shut up. No, I've yeah. been gone. But I, no way. Not in not being a modern person. Go back to the, go back then. No way. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. No. Sorry. <laughs> uh, not not a cool time. Yeah, no. 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 I mean, I would go back. Oh fine. yeah, you'd be, you'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could do. We could go back. Uh, we'd be like Django. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as smooth as that other guy though. It is oh, something else, oh, man. oh god! Oh my god! He's a German guy, right? Uh, what's his name? He was uh, Colonel Landa in um, Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, man, uh, was he? He was something else. Oh, in, he was. Uh, Django. He deserved the Oscar. I mean, hey, yeah. It was uh, great. That like that opening scene with those ruffians that they run into. <laughs> he's all like speaking all sophisticated, you know. And <laughs> oh, my. or you could be like uh, Don Johnson on his oh, plantation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big daddy. How you doing? <laughs> It's like, are we going with the hoods or are we not going with the hoods? <laughs> <laughs> See, even racists have a sense of humor. Right? <laughs> So uh, no, that, that was, was such a great scene. Uh, <laughs> and that, and that, what was his name? The uh, the heavyset guy that uh, his wife sold the uh, what's his name? Josh. He was in the Wolf of Wall Street. Oh yeah, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. No no no, the the, the kid, the younger guy. Um, I can't think of his name. Oh, 
Um, uh, oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Now I can't think of his name. I can't think of his name either. But uh, Jordan Belfort. Your mic's off. Okay, Jordan Belfort. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Rob Reiner. <laughs> I'm just looking at the chump, chubby guys at Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, no, uh, uh, well, uh, John Chris Favreau. Far- Chris Farley. I can I can see the guy. He was in a uh, um with uh Super Tw- Bad Twenty One Jump Street. Yeah, he was a Super remake. Bad too. He was the fat kid. Oh, fat- Jonah Hill. Jonah, Jonah Hill. Hill. I was getting that the fact that he was a, he's Jewish. <laughs> he's making things. <laughs> she was a Klansman. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so uh no we have to be something like that and uh i think they've already hit one of these movies they were hit on, hit on the point that uh if you're a person of a certain type uh they too many <laughs> cool times in american past yeah. in american history you want to go back to <laughs> yeah but uh it's like if they had uh uh, oh, so it's like they had time machines. If they invented time machines, certain people would only go to the future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll go back. Well, I'm thinking some modern weapons. <laughs> no problem. Uh, That's funny, yeah. man. That would be a funny sketch. If Short like, stay. Uh, you know, keep it to the point. I'm going to get yeah. back to do this. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> you stay in job. Okay, no problem. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, that'd be like a funny sketch of like like some black guy goes into like a, a store where they sell time machines you, know? <laughs> you going back to ancient egypt again it, it's like, <laughs> yeah i think i might it's like i only need the the future model so. <laughs> that's right i only have forward gear no reverse gear <laughs> yeah i don't want to pay extra for the reverse i'm not gonna use it <laughs> so uh like uh what's that that's funny john uh what's that movie uh about time time cop with uh what's his name uh the, the ballet dancer turned martial artist um uh, what's his name? Uh, Jean Claude Van D- Van D- Van Dam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who was like he wasn't a martial artist; he was a dancer, but passed himself off as a martial artist. Yeah. Uh, the guy goes back to um, 1863 and stops a Confederate convoy full of gold in a wagon. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. And he has the two Mac tens behind his back. Yeah, and he walked. They rolled up to him with their you know 1847 you know Navy. You know, yeah. Navy, uh, whatever's, <laughs> and uh, he's he's just standing in the middle of the road. He says, uh, "They said, what you want?" He says, "I want that gold in the back of your wagon." They kind of look at each other like, "And you just gonna stand here by yourself and take these?" He goes, "Yeah." And he pulls out two back tens and mows them all down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd have a, a slight advantage if you had some, had some oh, better yeah. gun. Hey, Mr. Lincoln. Uh, Four city, you might want to pass. <laughs> you might want to pass. <laughs> yeah, really. You might want to let, just, just stay home tonight. Yeah. Why? I'm telling you. Stay, <laughs> stay in tonight. <laughs> it's like, have you seen that meme on Facebook of the, uh, uh, with that the Mike Pence or whatever that that whole thing with Hamilton, yeah, yeah. you know that. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's this meme it showed a picture of Abraham Lincoln. It's like, oh, so you had some problems at a theater. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So that joke I heard, yeah. that joke that. Uh, well, Mrs. Lincoln, except for that, how was the how was the show? Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, insensitive. Oh. But the, you know, I'd say with that Mike Pence thing, people made such a big deal out of that. I watched the video of when they were talking to him. It's like. I mean, yeah, it was odd that they addressed someone in the crowd, but they didn't say anything that was that bad. And I not that he took any offense. He's like, okay. Yeah, he wasn't offended by it. Like, you know, Trump, of course, he's got to get on Twitter and you know, make a big deal out of it. You know? uh, which, uh, what's uh, who's trying to get a recount? Oh, and, uh, yeah. The Russians apparently hacked the ele- election. Uh, That's starting to really gain some traction. Uh, yeah. and the right. Green Party wants a recount. Oh, yeah. the, the, yeah. the party they might vote for. Okay, yeah. uh, there's. Uh, I think somebody said that uh, the Democrats are trying to use the Green parties as cover. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Go ahead. I read something today that that Jill or Jill Stein's her name. She doesn't even like Hillary. That she didn't even yeah. like Hillary, like supporting her and stuff. So, uh, so you know what? It's, it's over. A mess. He won. Let's go. Give him a chance to see what he does. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, enough's enough. I like politicians. <laughs> <laughs> and stay off the Twitter. Like, I That's wish he would just stay off of Twitter. Or if he does tweet, you know, just <sighs> just keep it simple, you know. And uh, Donald, you're in the big chair now. You gotta yeah. be gotta act adult now. Come on now. Yeah, uh, Putin's like, duh. Yes, I love this man. <laughs> I love him. Yes, yes. That's um, scary. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's scary. Yeah, I mean. If Putin likes you, that's scary. <laughs> Putin yeah. likes me. Oh, what, what's happening? What's going on? Yeah, maybe it'll keep us out of a war with Russia, which would be oh, good. Oh, yeah. We don't want, well, uh, the Russians, they are all about exploiting their, their uh, natural resources. You know, hey, Americans, we have no time for this war stuff. We got to make money. It's about profit now. Right. So. Yeah. All right. Well, 
Me and Patrick have to get to an open mic to try to do some comedy. All right, yeah. And uh, so this was fun, man. Uh, no it's problem, always, dude. Anytime, dude. <laughs> it's always fun. <laughs> I was just, I was just like a warm up for the big show. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll stretch a little bit with some podcasting, and then yeah. we'll go out there and do some stand up. That's well, right. Yeah, must be rough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. must be rough. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say, man. Open open mics. It's not. It's not all. Um, flowers and honey i mean it's it's pretty rough it is <laughs> yeah i mean it not i don't mean like on stage like you, you expect to not get laughed sometimes or whatever you get uh-huh. used to that but mm-hmm. you know just having to always like hang out in bars and go well yeah it's, yeah. all the time mm-hmm. and sit around and wait and and just and you, like you know let's face it like every comedian that shows up is not entertaining it's not fun to watch well, that's, just, go, that's, that's just being honest and yeah. you got to sit through so much of that you know how long do you guys get how long are you, you five typically minutes? four or five minutes most usually four okay you know so you've got to sit through a lot of a lot of first timers a lot a lot of third timers a lot of <laughs> okay. haven't been out since you know last you know the guy making year. jokes from the 80s hey dude oh uh, man you do have is, those. it's entertaining if you're not there every week uh-huh. for like yeah. an outsider to come and watch somebody bomb oh, right. okay kind of entertaining oh you see it all the time it's just kind of unless there's something really extraordinary about it mm. it's kind of old it, it, what is funny you'll have comics that will show up and they're like like a time traveling 80s comic oh, you know, <laughs> oh you know what i'm talking about patrick oh, those yes. guys that like like this guy would have probably yeah. been kind of funny and like in twenty in years 80s, ago, yeah, yeah, in the eighties. But there's yeah. like nothing, you know, updated Relevant. about his act. You know, it's like all stuff that's been just stepped on and walked. Like Johnny over. Carson, sorry, I'm dating myself on saying that. Johnny yeah. Carson, all his all his stuff was from the forties and fifties, and oh, yeah. but he'd been on TV for like forty years though, so yeah, yeah. kind of overlooked it. But yeah, and yeah. It, it's fine for them. You know, there's things that were funny then that aren't now. Yeah, and it's not that. It's it's only because they've been overused, you know. And you still got to be relevant, right? Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, hey. and and relevance is not just about like talking about things that are going on now. It's just you know continuing to take it in a new direction. If you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're not like take my wife, please. Jokes were great in sixties. <laughs> yeah, you know? I mean, uh, yeah, that's like yeah. the the best joke of all time. <laughs> it's, it's three words. Take wait, wait, wait. my Please. Four, four words. It is a good joke. I will say. <laughs> it's like <laughs> one of the shortest jokes, which is the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Well, it's more than just, you know, tell the joke. It's about what timing. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, delivery. I mean. Right. Hey. I, I will say, though, that this is, I don't know, you can see if you agree, Patrick, but, the, you know, the writing is a big part of it. You know, a lot of, I've heard a lot of like really experienced comedians say it's like no, it's all about your it's all about your delivery and all about your stage time. Writing is a very small part of it. Mm-hmm. No, no, I, but I don't, I don't uh, from what I've seen, I mean, uh, I've seen people that have a lot of experience and been doing it a long time that mm-hmm. don't get a lot of laughs, and I think it's because they don't spend enough time writing. I, from what I understand, you got to have a good joke at the end as, of the day. As an know? outsider, I'm thinking this material. Yeah, you can read jokes. On out of a book and they'll make you laugh. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you gotta be a yeah. comedy. It's a both. It's both. Yeah, you gotta have good jokes at the but end of the day. Material, good material and delivery and timing and you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could have like you could, like you could have a great delivery but no jokes and no one's gonna laugh. But you could have a <laughs> terrible delivery and great jokes. Speaking of that, you know. Dave Attell, you heard of him? Oh yeah. Oh, that guy. I would have a him. I ain't seen him in the uh, Patrick great. saw yeah, him just, at Zany's He's touring ago. all over the place. But, yeah. uh, okay, I mean, I saw his last. The guy's great. Now, yeah. he needs to update his material a little bit. <laughs> I, last The last couple times I saw him, hey, I heard that joke like a year and a half ago, dude. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Come on, dude. Yeah. But uh, the guy's funny. He was, uh, I saw him on MTV. Uh, oh, yeah. And uh, I a couple, he did a couple of show times, but uh, he kind of petered out. As know. far as being on TV a lot, but he still does he tours a lot and stuff. He's so. a tour, okay, all right, which is where the real, you know, rub hits the road, right? As yeah. far as comedy is being on the road. Yeah, I think so. For it just kind of depends, you know. I guess on who you are. I know some guys like uh, they just once they get on TV enough to like be able to book the good shows, like they just want to be on the road. You know, that's the whole reason that they do it. Oh, okay, yeah. All right, I thought that's they, not me because I was kind of landlocked. But. I thought they, <laughs> I thought to go you the HBO special, you know, the big yeah, job, HBO right, special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like going to be the fifteen minute YouTube special. <laughs> oh, come on now, we got come on. You got, you got to get the hour show on HBO. Yeah. And, uh, hey. Now I will put out. I'm gonna. My plan is I'm probably not going to be ready 
in the next two years. That would be the earliest I can imagine doing it. it would be in about two years, mm -hmm. uh, but it could be three. I, I plan to put out like 15 minutes on YouTube, like a, a like a good three years. Uh, hopefully, like 15, 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah, because if, if you go too early, then you burn jokes that you could have maybe made like a lot better. Okay. You know, or like grown into bigger bits and, and ah. stuff like that. Because it takes so long to come up with these ideas. You don't want to just waste you're, you're them. You're always know? getting better, too. Yeah. Okay, I thought this was like off the top. Robin Williams, just off the top of the head. You no, know? nothing. No, no. Even, even Robin Williams not off the top of the head. Oh, he yeah. Well, well I, I, okay. I heard Variations it. on stuff. Yeah, but it's, it's stuff that he's th thought about before. Maybe okay. he's never said out loud. But Okay. Okay. I'll, okay, another myth is shattered. Yeah. <laughs> very, <laughs> very rarely are people coming off. You know, things off the top of their head. Because he, uh, yeah. v Good Morning Vietnam, that when he did his uh, first uh, DJ rant, he, they said that was completely uh, ad lib. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some of that kind of stuff you can. Yeah, but you still have fast, too. Yeah, but you still have some idea of a core of like a premise or something that you're going with. You know, like sometimes I'll go on stage with literally just a premise, mm -hmm. and then I try to like talk my way into a joke, and okay. sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. You have to set it up, and then... And then, okay. and then I just, it's like the the setup is pre thought out, but then there I got nothing else after that. So it's okay. like <laughs> take right. you know it's just like all right, let's see where I can take it. I take the the energy, and mm -hmm. then sometimes you just hit a dead end. You're like, well, there was there was no punchline there. That's Sorry. Right. <laughs> As what I found is jokes are hard. They are. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's like a lot harder than you know. <laughs> you're right. You, is that right, John? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> they're so sitting around. Jokes uh, are very hard. You sit around people that you know, like you said before last week. You sit around people that you know. It's not that rough, you know, make them laugh. But remember, there's context. You know, I'll people that you don't know. It's just these are people out there in the dark that you don't that don't know you. People yeah. who know me, I have very very much problems making them laugh. Usually, oh. For, I don't know what because they've heard and you know, they're like, "All right, we get it." Wait, I know, <laughs> I know how your mind works. I'm really tired of it. That's right. <laughs> so, but uh, all right, man. Yep. This is, oh, my eyes. That's, this is this is a joke. Right, this hard. <laughs> hard. Jokes are hard. Yeah, they are. Yeah, uh, you see, people they make it look easy. You know, they just yeah. spit that shit. You're like, man, I, I can I can do this. Hell, when I get paid. Yeah. But uh, no, it sounds rough. Yeah. <laughs> people do it don't is. have the good perspective that John is showing right now, and and they just want to do it for you know six months, and they're like, why am I not? getting booked at zanies well, yeah. you know, i want to i want things to happen quick or the other way things are happening really quick and they think like oh i'm making this much progress already that means it doesn't it doesn't work like that way it's not mm -hmm. like it's not one of those things like the progress that you make is it's it's not like i've made x amount of progress so that means in five years i'm going to make five times that much progress that's not how no, it works no 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 it's not no, how it no, works no, at no. all like you might make a lot of progress for a little while but then you're going to hit a wall yeah and mm. you might have gone about it the wrong way that you're not ready to go to that next level you know that happens with a lot of people it's like they make a lot of progress they're funny and then when they get to a certain point, I think it's like, people realize or they realize that there's really nothing that original or special about them, mm -hmm. so they can't really make it to that next level. When you look at the at the the high levels, the the comics that you see on TV mm -hmm. that are selling out big rooms, they, they, they've got something that's very special and unique about them. Okay. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. It's the person or material or both. Oh, it's oh, both. Yeah, both. It's definitely um, both. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you're you're who you, like you have to be very like being very self-aware is part of it too because if people are noticing things about you that they feel like you're avoiding like yeah. you know what i mean that they're kind gonna of target it yeah yeah so you want to you want you want people to be like oh man that's so him that thing he that's said right. you know <laughs> or i think uh um um you can you can pick up on stuff that's common to everybody you know yeah. the, 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 you know situations right but it still has to be like your own unique kind of by the way i've got the camera set up so you guys are like connected at the waist right now <laughs> <laughs> that's right baby that's right conjoined twins because i was about to because i was about to ask uh you know uh how hard is it to stay original or to be original oh it's almost impossible there, there is really no, like that's the thing about being original is there's really no way to actually do it you just have to like Put yourself in that arena and and try to do what you think is good, and then you you will either be original or you won't be. Mm -hmm. That's why I like the whole classic thing with comedians. You can't really give anybody advice because no one really understands what it is that just makes it click. Yeah, yeah. But it mm -hmm. does. You can recognize it when you see it. You know, like there's certain comedians. 
uh, like like Monty Mitchell, for example. He's been on this show before. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that he's still fairly early on, really, in his, mm-hmm. his in his career. He's been doing it for like seven or eight years. But when you see that guy, you're just like, he has got it. Like there's something about him and his jokes and everything that just fits and mm-hmm. it just works and it's different. You know, like that that's a guy that's gonna be successful, at least to some extent, you know. Ellen, and, again, Ellen DeGeneres, that nobody knows what that something is either. Yeah. It's just that whatever it is. Right. And you just have to kind of put yourself out there to mm-hmm. see if you yeah. have it or not. You know, so it's really like you're not I don't think you really find that out until really you get five, six, seven years into it. Man, I never heard this guy talk. Five, six, seven years. Yeah. I thought five, six, seven months. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, man, it's tough. It is. Dude, you yeah. guys are kidding. You kidding? It's I'm, tough. Shattered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shattered. I'm shattered. I'll just go out there and tell me some jokes. Get fat. No. No. <laughs> it ain't like that. Not no, tall. Not, not tall. Uh, no. And then uh, this other guy, uh, uh, Mancia. Carlos Mencia. Oh, yeah. He talked about how people steal jokes all the time. He just steals jokes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he says. Like, it, there's some, there's some uh, interview of him where he's like, if you're a young comic and you see me walk into the club while you're doing your set, you better not bring your A material because I'm going to steal every one of those jokes a, and replace the guy with a Latino guy. And it's exactly. Be my joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I he's mean, a, he's a bastard. I yeah. mean, I heard that, you know, don't be too good because yeah. all of a sudden, you know, they're doing your, their version of your joke. Yeah. And that's like the <laughs> ultimate faux pas in, in comedy culture is stealing somebody's material. Yeah, it's impossible and, to uh, copyright jokes. So it's just yeah. like, uh, well, yeah, and that, and then that's that's the thing that makes it so difficult is like one of the worst things you can do in comedy mm-hmm. is steal somebody's jokes, uh-huh. and then pair that with one of the hardest things in comedy is to find original jokes. <laughs> that's you right. know what I mean? So like, you know, you're gonna you're gonna tell a joke that <coughs> someone like if you do it long enough, and you tell enough jokes, you're gonna tell a joke that somebody else has already told. Uh, the, their their got, version. Of I it, got yeah. a good story about that. Okay. I was I was in an open mic and Cody Marley was there. Cody Marley's this great oh, local yeah. comic who he, used, he, used to write for like Letterman and oh uh, Leno s- send in jokes to Leno and Letterman. Okay, and he he g- goes to open mics when he's in town sometimes. And I did a joke. Um, this is how the joke goes. Uh, I want to get a tattoo of the midget from the show Fantasy Island. You know, okay, okay, because his name was Tattoo. Oh, okay, right. so, okay, jerk grenade. Yes, you have to explain. Okay, what yeah. I meant by that one, <laughs> I tagged it with something like, you know, he also played a midget in the James Bond films or something like that, which is, yeah. you know, just you know, not oh, is he odd jobs? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. But uh, saying he played a midget was kind of a <laughs> yeah. an, ass, kind of a, an ass thing to say. But Cody Marley was like, "Yeah, I actually have a joke that's almost exactly like that." You know that yeah. that joke has been available to write for like the past thirty five years. Oh, so you know that that guy was whenever Fantasy Island came out, that could have been a joke. So there was ample time for someone to make that joke. Mm. He made that joke in the nineties, um. and he pitched it at some writers meeting for Leno or something. And they were like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that one's going to work, you know? And then a week later he saw it on, on Letterman or Leno. Of course. Something, something yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Probably. Write that down. Did you get that? That's it'll never work. Get that down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I did a joke that he had already written and already had stolen from him before. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh Jesus. Yeah. Oh. Like so. I had a, um, uh, talked about this in another podcast like i had a i had, well i had a joke one time that i thought of mm-hmm. and then i was watching one of joe rogan's podcasts and he made that same joke in the podcast uh, and i was like well i'm glad i saw it at least it, saved me from, you know. it worked I, apparently it worked okay. yeah yeah so it's like you know one thing if you hear someone famous do a joke that you thought of uh, it's kind of like one oh well that sucks i can't do that joke now um uh, and two you're kind of like but <laughs> it was good. You know, it hey, was apparently right. a good joke. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your uh, head's in the right place. Sid yeah, Caesar, exactly. uh, again, show up. I'm going way back. Sid Caesar from uh, the show of shows from the 50s. He talked about, he said that uh, when him and Mel Brooks sat around with all the other writers doing jokes, they tried on each other first. 
Yeah. And then that's how you tell if the joke has a chance. Right. Because if you if the people you know are not laughing, these people you don't know sure as hell aren't gonna laugh. Yeah. So because oh. sometimes in your own head you can get something kind of twisted mm-hmm. in this weird sort of way that you think is funny. Yeah, you'll be able to express it, but though. no one else understands it. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I've seen some guys uh, like Emo Phillips. Man, yeah, I oh, he's up. great. I just saw him at Zany's a couple of weeks dude, ago. Dude, I mean, bad, <laughs> great reference, dude. You pull, I can believe him. I got that reference. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, the guy they still got that haircut. Did we talk about him? Last no, no, week? no. We, I think we did. We did? Yeah, we he did. Still got yeah. the haircut. Uh, yeah, he still got that weird. Yeah. Bowl <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice, Patrick, that we talk about the same things on about every podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> throwing a couple of new stuff every now yeah. and again. You know? Oh, we have we haven't talked about naked and afraid yet do you ever get afraid. drunk with nazis <laughs> not, 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 right. after being on naked and afraid yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, but we should do oh no i'm not even gonna drink about that one uh naked and afraid big john show uh, right. uh, i won't be here for that one thank you yeah. <laughs> no thanks <laughs> no thanks fully clothed and afraid there we go. that's right <laughs> loin cloth and afraid <laughs> joking off <laughs> if i was on naked and afraid i'd probably just find a little corner and joke myself off <laughs> no fire no hunting fish no hunting fish. fish do you fit do you hunt fish if i was on castaway <laughs> y'all were talking about castaway i would just you know find a quiet place on the island <laughs> and joke myself off <laughs> And then when I was done, he went on his own terms. <laughs> he, yeah. his own terms. <laughs> he, he he died after a week. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like maybe he was just joking off the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he was dehydrated. That's what we need to start a new show and call it uh, "Joking Off Af- uh, Open Mic." <laughs> <laughs> joking off is the funny funny phrase it uh, is yeah you can start off each uh, podcast with a joke i don't know that's right it could yeah. joke of the day let's joke uh, off here for a oh, minute oh here's my joke of the day <laughs> <laughs> so did you hear that dictionary.com named xenophobia as its new uh, word of for new word of the year xenophobia what's the what do they have against that lucy lawless that's oh god okay, okay. <laughs> all right all right yuck <laughs> it was uh not good all right tell us tell us a better joke patrick and then we'll end on that okay uh here's a joke that norm mcdonald sometimes will tell it was like just an old joke so this uh this guy is a great joke there was this guy who was having memory memory problems and he uh Get some new, get some drugs for his memory, and he comes. He is at home just hanging out. And his buddy comes over to visit. And his buddy's like, "How are those memory drugs working out for you?" And he's like, "Pretty good, you know." And he's like, "What? What's the name of those drugs?" I'm like, ah, I can't remember. What's the name of that? What's the name of that flower? That one type of flower? And his friend's like, "I don't know, like a tulip." He's like, "No, no, it's like a uh, red. You would bring it on a date, a uh, carnation." No, uh, it's long stem, you know, romantic. And the guy's like, oh, a rose? And the guy's like, oh, yeah. Uh, hey, Rose, what's the name of that new medication I'm taking? <laughs> old, old fart can't even remember the name of his wife. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, All right. Uh, All right. Well, well, this has been Gun <laughs> Podcast. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Culture Podcast Guns Radio. Gun Culture Radio. All the words were there. Maybe yeah. not the right order, but this, been, this has been Gun Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what is this called? Gun Podcast? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys have been great. Give it up for John. Give it up for Derek, guys. Oh, yeah. Come on, guys. I told you they don't clap on a podcast. Get that applause. Yeah, you. You gotta get that applause side.